boys. That's yes. right. All right, welcome back everyone to Archon Team League Championships, week five, day one. Uh, Shockey just went away. Monk is still with me, although he's just a picture. Uh, but just joined us. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I've uh, had a long day, and uh, when I, mean, I was streaming earlier on my own stream, I actually was mislead a bunch of times. But uh, other than that, it's really awesome. I, oh, so many great news in, about Hearthstone today. All the announcements, all the new cards. They look, looked really cool. The reward system, like uh, it's a, uh, it's pretty awesome, and uh, really looking forward to this match. Yeah. How uh, how excited are you for the new expansion? By the way, a little a little note, side note. Nine out of ten. Like as soon as they announce the patron nerfs, then it's like ten out of ten. But I guess say, yeah, it has to happen. I mean, there's so many cool cards okay. that we'll never see play otherwise if if patrons stick around. And uh, I feel like that uh, if there's no balance changes coming, that the uh, patrons might still end up right. dominating. And uh, yeah, like a lot of the cool cards won't be so cool since you can't play them. There's the slow the inspire mechanic is so slow it encourages long games. And uh, yeah, yeah, it I just doesn't that. work. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, before we move on to the first match, guys, uh, the first games, other the second match, that is, we're going to be having a little presentation about Oskaka. So we'll be right back after this. My name is Sebastian. People know me as Oskaka in Hearthstone. Uh, I come from Sweden. I'm 19 years old and I'm playing for Forsen Boys. I think I mostly play everything, but I th I'd say I'm most known as like a ladder player. I think the format's very good for people who are more flexible, uh, and I think that our team is, consists of very good deck builders, and so having six classes for every week, uh, we'll be able to capitalize off of that and do really well. I would say keep playing the same deck, look, at, uh, look up streamers who are sort of good at that deck, and keep playing that deck, tweak it, you know, for the meta, and just keep trying to learn that deck more and more, because playing well is the most important thing. Thanks for supporting us. I don't know. Well, we're just done seeing the um, video from Askaka. We've seen Shockey cast with us a little earlier. He's on to play his matches. He just woken up, so hopefully, after the first match, he's fully awake. And now we can see the classes from all the players. So, does anything stand out to anyone here? Whoa, Shaman and Druid, where's the rogue on either side? Yeah, no rogue. Uh, what I was looking at, I'm actually surprised that Team Nihilum is not bringing the Acre Paladin. We see it on, uh, on Forsen Boy's side, Jockey playing the Paladin. I'm like 99% sure that we're going we're gonna to see the, the face Paladin. And, uh, and the Nihilum guys were, uh, like, already was playing it at, at Assembly, so uh, I thought that he might have been bringing it here too, but I don't know. Instead of they're going for Shaman, which is likely to be Mech Shaman. Uh, probably Mech Shaman, yeah. We saw it earlier. It was piloted, I believe, by Xixo, who played it. Uh, I think he got 1-1 one -one with it, so did fairly well. Uh, you know, the old school. I almost want to say old school Shaman, but that one was modified. It's the new version with Leroy and Double Fire Guard. No Fell Reavers. We were talking about how vulnerable that was to some of the BGH plays that people pull off. And if it's that big of a threat and you're that afraid of the tempo loss, then just cut it for something more consistent. Yeah. Pretty much mm -hmm. every, or both teams, they've, I feel like they've gotten like a comfortable lineup. And we've seen this more and more in Narcon League where if players, they win with a lineup the previous week, they tend to stick with what they know. There's not th that much switching around. Pretty much everyone will have the same four decks. Uh, Warrior, Hunter, um, Warlock are the main three. And then they'll have like two or three comfort ones that they'll pretty much always bring. Chalky, of course, bring Paladin every single time. And I think uh, RDU, he's been he's been like trying a lot of different decks, especially aggro decks lately. So it makes sense for him to bring the Mech Shaman, which I believe he brought last week as well. Yeah, and yeah, Thais is bringing Mage instead of Rogue. So again, a little bit of a twist there. What's up? Yeah, Mech Shaman is pretty good in this format, I think, because there's a lot of combo decks around, and against those, sometimes Mech Shaman with a, with a good start is uh, just too fast, and uh, I'm, I'm liking that pick. Um, uh, both uh, both teams bring in Druid again. I'm, I'm actually really interested to see uh, how it works out for Ostkaga this time around. He might be a little bit traumatized though, with the week one where he lost five game, games in a row with it, and uh, yeah, Druid, Druid fell, off, fell off favor a little bit, but now it seems to be back, and uh, everyone. Uh, Everyone has included the Ancient of Wars, and those sometimes can do big things. 
Yeah, why do people play it? Is it mostly for, like, what matchup is it supposed to really improve? Like, massively improve? Well, uh, against, well, you, well, you can answer that one. Well, I was just going to say, like, uh, patron, it probably improves patron, it improves a lot of the aggro matchups, and I've heard it improves the mirror quite a bit, um, simply because no one runs Black Knight, and some, and it's sometimes hard to get past that 10 HP. Yeah, yeah that's it's a really point. Big. Yeah, it's really big in like against Zoo if if you manage to get it down and uh, so there's, there's very few ways to for Zoo sometimes to deal with it and uh, also against patrons it's surprisingly good because uh, patrons are often forced to use their executes before the ancient of war comes down so so when that happens uh, it it can lock out the game sometimes. Yeah, I feel like maybe some some decks it's like worse against maybe. Uh, control warrior since they can relatively deal with it easily, but that's like yet another deck that's not um, that great. And um, also maybe handlock. You probably want faster cards against like the more controlly decks. I feel. Yeah, it's yeah. not that great against handlock for sure. I mean, you you rather be just running the double combo. It's possible to run double combo even with the ancient of wars, but just like having that five ten, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I really like the aggro pally choice from uh, Fours and Boys to be brought. I don't think I've seen much of it. I think in Archon Team League it's been pretty much non-existent, if anything. Like, I think we've seen it once or twice so far. Yeah. It's, been... um, it's fairly recent as well, you know, it's in inclusion in the top tier. So maybe that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Speaking so of the Paladin, there, there we go. Right in the first game, Chuck is going to be playing that. And against RDU Shaman, those are like the... It's... That's two of those are fifth or sixth picks, I would say. Like those are the classes that you don't always bring. So this might be a big one. Manage, taking a taking a win with these classes is a, is a much more big of a deal than than let's say for example with the patron or hunter, because usually those decks end up grabbing the win at some point anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a really good start for Chalky. Uh, like I feel like the paladin generally, the minions are better, and like the board, con the, their board controlling tools are better, especially with shield and mini bot and the uh, muster for battle. Whereas shaman, they don't like mid range shaman doesn't even have anything to, or doesn't have much to deal with those. So I would expect mech shaman to have even fewer options. Right, yeah, lightning storm is a one of at most in some variants as we mentioned earlier, and the paladin also, you know, if they're playing against aggro, they might cut. Um, one of the arcane golems sometimes for the consecration. If they're playing against a slower deck, then they might play two arcanes instead. Uh, it's kind of an interesting difference in the way they play. Yeah, I think the biggest thing in this matchup why I would favor Paladin kind of heavily is that uh, the shaman, like you mentioned, that lightning storm. They, they, it's usually only one off, or maybe not even one. Most of the lists don't run any lightning storms at all. So when something like Master of Battle comes down, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, going to instantly turn into a race, and I think the Paladin might be able to. Uh, adjust the wind there. It, also, the paladin curves out nicer because there's more minions, and sometimes the shaman just throws a bunch of spells like we see here with the flower burst. And well, Urchuk is kind of nice to have, but still, like it's it's not working out so well. His next turn is gonna have to be hero or a spell. Yeah, he's gonna have to draw something good, and it's not as though he's got like he he has options. I mean, there's mech warper. He's got the coin power mace. He's got a spider tank possibly. There's a few draws that could improve this, but at the moment, I don't like. This is not a hand you're really looking for as RDU. No, not at all. Shaman is. I think this is my opinion, but I, I think mech shaman is one of the most inconsistent decks. And uh, yeah, oh my goodness, that is a horrible draw. That's so bad. It's like he doesn't have any minions to play before turn five with the with the coin. I'm hoping to get the spell power totem here so he could have coined out an earth shock maybe, but it's it's looking pretty grim for the shaman player right now. Yeah, it's just gonna get worse and worse. For this. Yeah. Reporting for duty. Wow. No, your Shron would have been like the only card that would have helped him out of this situation, and even then, because of muster, the weapon hit plus the even sh the uh, shielded mini bot, that would have still been hell. Yeah. Wow. So and, and now we're at least seeing a minion from RDU, but it's like w one of the worst minions for getting board control back in the game. When you think of like the two drop mechs for e each player, you have the shielded mini bot against the whirling zapomatic, and obviously the shielded mini bot wins that battle. The zapomatic is so bad here; it matches up really poorly against the shielded mini, but even the other minions. Like, so do you have an emergency cool in this? I mean, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> So horrible. They might still do it because of like divine favor potential, and uh, there might not be anything better to coolant later. Maybe a blessing of king's target. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, against a lot of aggro decks, um, the 
the, the aggro paladin typically doesn't have a like they don't get really value divine favors off but against mech shaman a deck that has a lot of burst that you can't use until late game that card can actually get quite a lot of value mm -hmm. it does go pretty cool and yeah, I'm kind of interested to see, because we can see the hands that there's the Earth Shock, so probably Juggler into Hero or Juggler into deck, and maybe the Juggler into deck, and it just seems like way better play than the Kings would be here. Okay, it's going for the Hero Power. I like that, the, the deck hand is pretty easy to squeeze in on, on later turns. This is looking <laughs> even worse for the Shaman. He, he better have that Lightning Storm decked in, but I really doubt it. Death by a thousand cuts is how this feels. This is like a bunch of 1-1s one just smashing you one at a time, and you're dead in four turns. Yeah. Wow. Like, even though we don't have a lot of stats on this matchup, I feel like this probably is one of the most one-sided matchups in the entire game. For Paladin, it's like 75 to 80, maybe. Well, maybe more like 75-ish. I, I think it's one of their best matchups at, like at, of all time. Maybe just behind... Well, yeah, I want to say Demon Handlock... But maybe Demon Handlock is a bit better than Handlock even against this. Yeah, it's not completely undoable. If the Shaman yeah. gets the right card, starts with a Gogmaster, for example, and they get Spell Reavers, the Shaman might be able to raise the raise the Paladin. But this, like, the Shaman just can't like can't clear. It's impossible to clear. You have to raise him in this position. <laughs> he needs to first get something on the board. Yeah, at least he got the Spell Power Totem, so that's gonna. I don't, I don't want to say equalize because that'd be a total lie. But it's going to <laughs> slow down yeah. the speed at which he's getting obliterated. But now with that, uh, that Urchuk out of the way, he, he probably feels safe to just use the kings here. Mm -hmm. And pull even further ahead. Wow. And this is where you're like, well, do I have to Lava Shock a, a hero power minion? Is this really happening to me? Uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> This is such a one-sided game. He kind of has to, but it's that a winning play? No, but what is it? And uh, yeah. leaving that up, there's like no way he can win by leaving that up either. Uh, again, it's just the mech theme is kind of hurting mech shaman. I feel like mechs generally are not that great, and it's the mech synergy that brings it all together, like the power mace, for example. Um, whereas, like in the, in the paladin deck, you're running better minions overall. If you compare the neurotron, it's kind of like the haunted creeper that you more typically find in the uh, aggro paladin. That's just better overall. Yeah. So he's really trying to figure out a way here. What, what could be the top deck? Like the, what he has in his hand doesn't give him any any chance to win, but he's trying to imagine the best card that he can draw next turn to potentially climb out of this, but there's probably not even a card that he can really draw. It's gonna I don't, crack yeah, five, I don't think there's one. I like this play from him though, because it's allowing him, if the Crackle kills the 5 5, which it should, 75% um, of the time, it's allowing him to coin out the Fire Elemental to compensate for the Overload instead of Lava Bursting. It's like. Yeah. It's really the only way this is going to do anything, but now the Consecration is going to make him feel. Yeah, well, really I mean, there, what do you do here, right? As RD. <laughs> yeah, you, like, you just can't deal with this swarm. The light protects Pretty much, you can't kill these 1 1s. So they'll be doing three damage to you every single turn, and it's kind of like a you're facing against a hunter hero power. Yeah. So the option is to lava or stone face or. <laughs> or just I guess you, is there even another way to do it? I guess you could maximize the amount of self-inflicted damage by using the rock biter first to kill the two on. The deck hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he thinks that the, like in theory he could still be alive here, because there's only four power on the board. But we know better. There's the Arcane Column coming in, and uh, easy 1 0 for uh, for Chucky and, and the Force Boys here. And Chucky with a full on BM kit plays everything yeah. he can. The, the matchup, like we talked a lot about it, the matchup really favored the Paladin, but also the, the Mech Shaman draws not coming together at all. Horrible early curve, and that's just something that he couldn't afford. Right, yeah. like it could have been a lot better with one Cogmaster early. Could have tanked perhaps, uh, you know, one, 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 or two of them. Maybe died of the Lice Justice, but then an Oetron on the back end. Like, there's a lot of draws that could have made this yeah. a lot more manageable. Like Mech Warper, for example, if you get it coined out on turn one or something, it can be something the Paladin can't immediately remove. It has no abusive search and for the one drop. And that might sometimes snowball where you just get, to, okay, then, then we go uh, Zabomatic and Oetron, things like that. But it was just, he had none of it. 
It was not yeah. even close. I've actually I've thought about um, like what deck do you bring as your sixth deck, and it's usually that aggro paladin or the mech shaman that you bring. And even though they're both like aggressive decks, I feel like they have very like vastly different matchups, and it all depends on what you're targeting. I feel like the mech shaman is. No, oh, we lost Monk for a little bit. The mech shaman is m more volatile. Yeah. It's a lot more volatile for sure. I think the like talking comparing those two aggro decks, like you can't really make a parallel just because the paladin doesn't aim to burst you down. I mean, the yeah. the, the mech shaman kind of reminds me of. Um, you remember the old aggro mage who tried to burn you down with frostbolt fireballs off the top? Oh yeah. Uh, it's holding that burst for late game in about the same way, but with lava burst and crackle existing at the same time, it's giving shaman a lot more reach. Uh, yeah, redundancy. The, that, that's true. Like the summon has more reach, but the, the paladin is just more consistent because paladin has less bad cards for the starting hand. The, yeah, right. you have, like arcane golems, those are bad, and maybe the consecration is a bit too early. But you have like twenty-five good cards in potential for your for your starting hand. While the shaman has way less. Like the shaman needs to draw the exactly cogmaster for turn one, and the, and those two two jobs for turn two, and this bunch of spells. So there's like seven spells or so, which are which are all something that you really don't want to be casting. Uh, before the later turns. Yeah, which is the big drawback, I guess, with Mech Shaman. And the reason why it's cast aside, like once in a while it'll come back in the metagame, but then disappear as soon as people get a bad streak of, uh, of games yeah. with it sometimes, it'll just fade out of the meta and then come back in later once they're targeting something very, very specific. Yeah, so it's... again, guys, uh, if you're looking to you know comment on the entire thing, you can tweet hashtag ATLC, it might show up. Somebody said, Savitz, I hope you're right about Grim Patron and that they nerf it. I mean, uh, yeah. it's it. Yeah, I don't want to theorize too much, but I mean, I don't think many people enjoy dying in one turn from full HP, and uh, that's the reasoning why Freeze Mage was nerfed and why, like, Auctioneer Leroy stuff was. So I, I have high hopes for it. Yeah, the reason, I mean, the reasoning still applies, right? Like, you can't, you almost can't interact with it. It's yeah, almost to the point hard. where yeah, it's difficult. All right, so apparently Shock is going to be thrown out again with his Hunter versus Life Coach's Warlock. Uh, again, we are having to assume it's Handlock just because it's Life Coach. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen Life Coach play Zoo, but it would it would really uh, mess Jockey's mulligans up, I guess. But with the Hunter, like, how many cards do you really change <laughs> based on that that knowledge? Well, some other deck maybe would uh, would be thrown up, thrown for a loop, uh, mulliganing for uh, for the for them. Yeah. And look, instead of Zoo, if it was Zoo, but Hunter mostly just keeps the same stuff anyway. But um, yeah, yeah Life Coach is known for playing not just Handlock, but um, like the greedier types of Handlock. So again, Force and Boys in really good position here. They had the mind games right. Tim Nihilum probably was exactly trying to dodge the Hunter here, thinking that uh, that uh, Force and Boys wouldn't send Chucky again. But uh, well played, and it's uh, it's a really favorable matchup. Yeah, and shaki has got a pretty good-looking hand. He, I mean, he, we saw him smile as soon as we got in. Life Coach doesn't have his webcam, unfortunately, so we won't get to see him focus very intensely. But, I mean, that's a really good hand for uh, Shaki. I think all he's missing is, like, a mad scientist, maybe to make this a tiny bit better. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, in this matchup, it's good for the... Like, usually it's good for the hunter to go first, but it's not, it's nice to go second against the handlock because of mortal coil. Because when mm -hmm. you drop Leper Gnome on turn one, if the if the Warlock has the has the Mortal Coil, that's the perfect answer answer to it. So now the Warlock won't get that opportunity to coil. Because turn two coil is just really really bad because it's so inefficient. Yeah, it's off curve, and as a result, it's uh, it's a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And Shuggy picks time, up a Warg yeah. Infiltrator to go with this. This is pretty insane. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, this is actually not that one. So I, I wouldn't draw a Life Coach out just yet. That's not even the worst hand possible. The Dark Bomb is really nice to have. Um, the, the Warlock struggles way more against the mid-range than the Face Hunter. Because against Face Hunter, sometimes you have that swing turn with the Molden Giants. And uh, and uh, it's it's actually close to 50-50 here. Alright, so, I mean, the, there was a Sentry Protector. Which is a decent body you can play as a a tool like to slow down the aggression, if only for the body. But when you see working infiltrator, you have to assume it's a much more aggressive version. Yeah, and not Chucky and, style also complements. Like he usually plays the faster versions. Mm -hmm. And he's got a really sick hand here. Oh Double yeah. Double animal companion. I mean, it's not that life coach has a bad hand. It's just that Shockies Shockies might be just better. 
Yeah, you really need a model while here. It's a tough position for for coach. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm it, wondering. It, it some, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm I mean, wondering if. Uh, one. I, I was wondering if the decision to bring like a demon handlock deck over maybe a standard handlock deck has to do with the fact that Team Force and Boys generally brings a very aggressive lineup with Hunter, Agro Paladin, and Zoo, and the Void Callers are typically less of a dead card than the Mountain Giants, which you would sub in. Yeah, it could be, and yeah, that's really good thinking there, because um, against those aggressive decks, the, the Mountain Giants are usually unplayable, because you, because you, against Hunter, for example, you can't be tapping on turn 2 and 3, if, and, uh, and uh, if you don't tap, if you play something, unless you have the coin, you are you cannot play the giant on turn turn four, which means you might never find the opportunity to play it. So, uh, yeah, definitely the demon version working out better against fast decks. Yeah. So here there's a consideration. Like if you don't kill the owl, your board gets hellfired and you lose everything. So I think you're at least forced to trade one thing into it. And he's gonna trade conveniently what has the least attack since anyway. Uh, if there was a coil, he would have probably already seen it. So he's yeah, pretty confident those one like one health minions can live. And there's still multiple targets for it too, so that makes the most sense. Wow, right, look okay. at the amount of damage coming right up with the Iron Beak L2, this is crazy. It's pretty crazy, but I actually don't think he's gonna owl here. He might save it for taunts. Mm-hmm. So what would you prefer to go for in a position like this one? Uh if face. you're not gonna go face. for that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what do you go for, I face? Yeah, I know what you meant. Um, <laughs> the infield trader, I don't. Hmm. Yeah, the hunter. You know, I mean, the warlock might just be dead if he if he spent a turn using using an AOE. So maybe you maybe you go all in. Um, it's uh, it's an interesting turn. Okay, here we go. Does he get the hopper? No. That is surprisingly bad for him. Actually, it's the worst of the the three. I feel in a position like this one. Yeah, in this situation, I, I don't expect that he would be playing around them. Um, the Moldens too much. We'll see. He might leave him up. He, he actually might. Twelve health, maybe. Like, okay. We go face. Well, never bad. Never too bad. Does he have a tell that it's uh, demon handlock yet? He hasn't seen anything that indicates that. So he's just betting on his opponent won't have molten shadow flame. Mm, it's quite often. Uh, even those Moldens exist in the demon demon handlock. Okay. Well, it's just so like. It doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, it might be sludge spelters that I've seen some people got. But he he looks like really dead here. The heal bot is not a winning play. He, it might it, it's gonna buy him one more turn, but then he doesn't have the heal bot anymore, and I, I I don't see a way for life coach to climb out of this really. Well, he's got to find a way to taunt at least two minions by the time his next turn comes around. So maybe yeah. use the Drake, uh, then dark bomb the three one, and then play. I mean, you could play heal bot and negate the damage that's already on the board. And then go for a Void Caller Taunt with Sun Fury. Maybe that's... Because it's going to bring you pretty much where you already are with a per, like small chance of... Yeah. Like I would be, in life coach choose right now, I'd be looking at every other option except the heal bot. Because I've been in this situation so many times. And if you heal bot this early, it's like almost zero chance to win. Because you can't kill your opponent fast enough. So, but uh, it's... Yeah. You know, it's I just don't see anything after, else. Yeah. yeah. It looks like every other option would just simply leave him dead, so he has to go for it. And the double owl for Shalky. I mean, there's no taunts being set up around here, that's for sure. This is almost uh, useless. I, I'm, I'm expecting to see a lot of face here, and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, so, I do, do you, you, so you know how to get this matchup. Like, you kind of understand how to play this, right? Yeah. You, you just kind of go face, <laughs> right? Yeah. You've got oh, a lot of experience, I can tell. Down to eight already. Like, that's usually from the warlock point of view. That the last turn is where he needs to on top test the mold and turn one. That turn is. Next. Well, so you, I mean, yeah. you're still okay-ish, right? Because you're getting the void caller and the molten giant taunted up. Well, I mean, in this yeah. case, he's really not okay, but really in most cases. Dead, yeah. But usually that's it's that's a one turn late. Because turn five, turn six, you, you always need to taunt up first, then heal, but on the turn afterwards. So that comes in like reverse order right now. Uh, if he had that molten last turn, he would have played it over the heal, but I'm sure. It's even, even if uh, you risk dying to some some combination of cards, it's uh, better to do that way around. Um, 
So the Lebanon with the double owls is this. Uh, it's not quite point? lethal, actually. It's gonna be very close, but not quite. Uh -huh. Oh, lol, yeah, he doesn't have the mana to do everything. All he needs is a uh, kill command for a guaranteed lethal, abusive sergeant, something to help. That's like, of, he, uh... he's also off mana. Like, he still can't get everything yeah. done. There's a chance that Life Coach can stabilize? God forbid I say that, but. No, I, I mean. Do that, another owl, wouldn't that yeah, be? Yeah, the, the Void Caller is getting silenced here, so there's no chance for Malganis anymore to get, to cheat that out. Healbot so, uh, no, heal number two would help you. Like, you win if you get the second Healbot, I think, right? Heal bot kill everything. Oh my god. Go out for it. This is this has to be the heal bot. It has to be the heal bot. And it right. isn't. And that's it, life coach knows it. Well, I think, I mean, uh, even with the heal bot. If Ibra went up to ten, Lebanon deals too. With the quick shot. I don't think Ibra ended the game in time. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Monk's kind of missing in action as well, again. Little connectivity issues today, so that's 2-0 for Shockey already. I mean, he's locked his two decks very quickly. Yeah. Then again, uh, he plays done. aggressive decks. Well played, and they, they got the right matchup on both of those games, really. Uh, both favorable, and, uh, and uh, it looked really easy once again. A bit of a maybe clunky draw from Life Coach, for example, getting a Void Caller, but not another Demon to go with it. Uh, didn't matter in the end, it just got silenced anyway, but yeah, that, that, that Hunter was just too fast for the, for the handler. Yeah, you're looking for Mortal Coils and the draw from Shockey was like, it, it, that's the, you know, the, the strength of those decks is you're guaranteed to have a semi-decent hand at least to start with. Um, but the, the, the Leper Gnome into Worgen Infiltrator into Creeper it, with the double owl at the end, if one of those owls hadn't been there, there might have, that might have made a difference because suddenly uh, he has to lose two minions going into the Void Caller, and he's missing out on a tiny bit of damage. So, I think ultimately, well played by both players, but it's just yeah. so difficult for uh, you, the handlock. You you also have to consider that those were two really good matchups for Chalky. Chalky got Hunter into handlock and Agro Paladin into Mech Shaman. So it's more of like either the mind games or just the random chance that four some boys happen to queue in good matchups. Right. Well, it happens, right? Once in a while, you'll get the perfect lineup. So it's funny, because Shockey was just here with us casting. We wished him good luck. And, you know, five minutes later, he's done with his two matches and can go back to doing whatever it is he wanted. So, um, yeah, kind of weird. So we'll see how Oskaka and Forsen can do for the rest of this. I mean, going forward, we've seen a lot of the time, you know, the team starts with a 2-0, but it doesn't mean much as far as the end result of the entire Conquest format. Because as decks get eliminated, it's easier and easier for the opponents to start queuing good matchups into them. And then uh, the score eventually starts settling on, you know, you get 3-3 and then 4-4. And sometimes it goes, I think the average for this league has been like 6-4 to 6-5. Yeah, so much like wins. That. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think like six threes even are very rare, so it's definitely like somewhere between six four and six five. Yeah. All right. Well, Force is going to be playing his mage versus Thais's mage. So if this is a freeze mage face off, I hope we get Force in a better hand than the one he had last time I saw him play that match. Um, man. Wow. Definitely okay, the well. worst hand possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man. Yeah. That was I, a crazy day. I will say that Tice, he has played a different like tempo mage deck at Assembly over the past weekend, but that's a deck uh, that was specifically from RDU, so it might be that he's playing this, but I think if they were playing that tempo mage deck, RDU would be piloting it instead of Tice because it originated Probably. from RDU. Yeah, so I, I would expect this to be a freeze mage meter. If one of these players is playing something else, they're going to be in, in trouble unless they have decked in and guess on, because usually... It, all the other lists include, like the Temple, for example, it includes the mirror entities, uh, in which case the Doomsayer is just gonna do its thing, and uh, that's such a blowout. And the, the Temple Mage doesn't have enough damage to end before, before the late turn, so we'll yeah. see. Well, this is Forsen's hand, I believe, and he's playing definitely Freeze Mage. I mean, it's funny how Forsen has been playing so much of. Wait, this is not dice. No, it's not Tice. Tice and Life Coach are both at GameCon right now because they qualified for WCA, um, the EU version of WCA, or the EU finals for the WCA. Oh my okay. god, Forsen! Nice oh, hand right oh, there. Man. What a great hand you've got oh. here, Forsen. Yeah, <laughs> just the look on his face. Like, never lucky, baby raging soon. 
Well, his opponent might have an equally bad hand, couldn't he? Yeah, it's possible. It Maybe even worse. Like uh, the free spell. Oh, there's Frost Nova. I was just about to say that the, those are like AOE spells are 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 what are even worse in this. Because uh, why do you do Flame Strike? You just you, you don't even want it in your hand. If you could uh, throw it away for zero mana, you you would do it every time. And uh, we see a hero power coming from Tys as well. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Force and his opponents got the Archmage it's, with Alex and the Acolyte of Pain. It's, it's yeah. happening once again, oh man. Yeah, I've seen this match. The next draw is another Blizzard. Ne next draw for Tice is, uh, is an Emperor Thorson. Okay, let's call it. So Blizzard into Emperor? <laughs> no, it didn't okay, quite yeah. pan out. Well, that could have been worse. It's not exactly great, but I mean, could have been worse. Yeah. By the way, uh, the player playing is Thais. It's just that we had to overlay an image because Thais is actually doesn't have a webcam wherever he is at the moment. Yeah. Uh, there's no confusion. He's... RDU is not hiding behind this account. There's yeah. no way. Yeah, because Thais and Life Coach are at GamesCon right now, it's kind of hard to get their webcams in. So we're gonna do yeah. it with, uh, the best we can. All right. Well, Force and can't feel too good about this though. No. Just look at the hand size discrepancy. <laughs> what? Well, he's gonna be drawing one from the leper. Maybe force him picks up an acolyte or an arcane intellect here. That would help a lot. I predict flame strike. Oh, oh I'm. Well, that's good. That might improve his chances. It's oh, not over another yet. frost over. There we go. <laughs> what a crazy draw. Now force him can reduce the cost of his crazy hand. Yes. <laughs> He Those can freeze his opponents nothing three times. Yeah, maybe on the same turn with the discounts. On like turn nine, he can go Frost Nova into Frost Nova into Blizzard. This is a crazy freeze. I think I might actually. He might win the game off of that. What if you give Jaina a brain freeze big enough that she dies? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, you, you can't actually freeze Jaina except once from the Frostbolt, but uh, I think. Turn six, you usually want to emperor, but like nothing in his hand is useful. Yeah, there's nothing there. Forsen, like if honestly, when Thais picks up his own emperor, if he does, this could seal the game. Forsen could still get back to back good late game draws that are going to carry him forward with his own emperor, but it's not exactly likely. Ah, it's a weird position, poor guy. It's like uh, this is flashback to what just happened. It feels yesterday, but. Mm. On the previous turn, you, you see this like a mad scientist that the Thais chose not to attack with his uh, with his mad scientist. That's because he, he effectively he ended up missing two damage, but that was because the potential uh, of 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 a uh, ice barrier. And in this matchup, you never want to trigger the ice barrier because the damage that you're dealing with the minions aside from Alex Tras is usually less than eight. So what you would end up doing is still two damage to face and just heal them for six. Yeah, you give them an extra health. So yeah. The oh, great man. card here from Forsen, picking up uh, a combination with Frost Nova Doomsayer back to back. He can lower the cost of them with Emperor Thorson to kill that yeah, mad he, scientist. He, he can clear the mad scientist with that combo. A, a mad scientist that is never going to ever attack. By the way, that's right. You're you're kind of making that value even <laughs> better, Monk. The more you speak of this, the better it sounds. I mean, what else can you really do? I think a Forsen. I mean, it's not as bad as the hand that he drew in the last game uh, for in Freeze Mage Rare against Kalento. And Tice's hand is also not as good as Kalento's hand, but this is still like pretty terrible. Yeah, I like the Blizzard here. That's going to be a useless card later on. Just getting it out of your hand. So if he ends up picking something like, let's say, Acolyte, Pings it, picks up another Arcane Intellect, he won't, he won't still be in trouble with having too many cards in his hand. This is an interesting turn. Um, yeah, we can see that he could just drop down the Nidus here, but I mean, it's too risky from his point of view. Yeah, you can't so, really throw that thread down. Like, there's a risk of fireball ping, so that's just a complete yeah. waste. Do you think he's just gonna wait it out until he finds the uh, Emperor Thorson, or just maybe the ability to play double fireball, obviously, uh, Frostbolt after playing Alex? He could you potentially know. do it next turn with like uh, Antonidas coin in the Frostbolt. It gets two fireballs. The three damage is kind of wasted because of the follow up of Alex mm -hmm. Raza. But uh, you know, that's something for your opponent to deal with. What's funny here is now. Okay, so Tice saved the, um, the Flame Strike last turn. 
And you would think that you want to throw that away, but if you didn't throw it away, or if you just threw the flame strike away last turn, he wouldn't have had a way to deal with this Emperor Thorson. So this is probably going to be like the most valued flame strike ever in this matchup. That's true. The problem with this is though that he's gonna lose the coin. He, I mean, he has to do it. There's no way he can leave the Emperor up in this matchup. So he has to flame strike coin Bing. But the, the, spending the coin feels pretty bad because of the uh, and the in his hand. Right. You want to really get that free fireball for no, you know, at no cost. It's one of those. Oh. Yeah. He's gonna go for the bubble blizzard. That works too, I guess. Yeah, that's that's actually I like this better. I didn't see that yeah. immediately, but this 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 feels better because of the Antoninus with the coin. You yeah. just play Nova on nothing. Wow. Well, not nothing anymore. Forcing with the big draws that are floating yeah, on top to right. <laughs> that's that dragon is flying, man. You can't target yeah. it. Yeah. It's you over. gotta wait to play it. He <laughs> doesn't even get it in his hand, like probably. Right. Uh, him, um, Dice might just match it up with his own here. Oh, I think Archmage Coin Nova is fine. You're getting two yeah, fireballs, no. and then uh, he he has to use his one fireball at the very least on your Archmage. In which case, That's you know that you can deal with the opponent's Alex afterwards. Yeah. Or um, he's probably gonna do something like Frostbolt and Ice Lance. And that's uh, those are actually pretty valuable since mm -hmm. if. Forsen draws the Archmage and Nice, he could have used those cards to get like so many fireballs. Yeah, Antonis would probably be in a game winning a draw here. At least he would have put him in, a, in a, an amazing position. Last it stands, he's almost like forced to use the Frost Nova here. I mean, not Frost Nova, I mean the, the Frost Ball, the Iceland, which just feels horrible without any further burn in his hand. Yeah, Forsen was trying to consider if there was any way to kill off this Archmage without using both pieces of the Frostbolt Ice Lance, but you can't really like Blood Mage, Frost Nova, Ice Lance, Ping, it's just a bit off. Yeah, it, it doesn't work, it's still one off. You can't yeah, leave this out. It's a tough spot. So yeah, it's, you have to basically um, Frostbolt Ice Lance, and it's just about what, what other minions you play. Yeah, I like playing the Blood Mage here, because basically he, what, he's, what he has remaining after this is nothing. Like, his hand is seems empty to me. Two Novas, one Doomsayer, one Ice Block. That's, that doesn't do anything, so he needs the extra draw to double his chance of getting a playable card for the following turn. Corner Cold. So this is kind of like a tight special. He's been running Corner Cold in his uh, Freeze Mage decks a lot. So Double Blizzard, mm -hmm. Double like Nova, Corner Cold is giving him a bit... I guess it's helping a lot against uh, some of the more mid-range decks, where you can stall a bit longer against those, like Druid, for instance, Kono Cole can do some pretty good work against. I think it's pretty good against Hunter, right? you, you, see, mm -hmm. you can go yeah. on for, for a lot of value and, uh, and the heal, but also it's um, gonna negate the, negates the hero powers from the Hunter for, for some turns, and potentially buys time, and maybe even makes the freezing traps more complicated to use. Okay. Well, that's the first fireball. He doesn't want to be uh, just holding that frozen on the board, so let's uh, let's get rid of it. Frozen finally picking up some guards, so about time. I mean, it's yeah, down. it's getting pretty late, but he's not quite dead yet. I mean, his opponent might have a good. Oh god. Okay. Is this his time to? Okay. This is I'm actually going to be. Yes, uh, I think. Tice, he didn't commit to a ping last turn, and now it's going to be really difficult for Tice to clear this board. With his current yeah, hand, it's actually impossible. That Antonidas one turn late for him. He, he can fireball ping that Antonidas, but if he, if he got that Antonidas one turn earlier, it would have been so amazing. But it's still good. It's, it, it gives Forsen some hope. Yeah. Even that though he barrier... can do that... Oh Sorry? yeah, the Ice Barrier will tank some damage, but because yeah. you didn't commit to the ping last turn, now it's a bit dangerous because uh, at least this this Alex Straza will get that eight damage in. Well, you have to know about her, right? It gets com it gets negated by the barrier. So actually, I think the Alex Straza like is somewhat irrelevant because the barrier would otherwise never even get triggered. So yeah, doesn't matter much. Yeah, I guess this is a slow enough matchup that you can afford to fit in that three mana for that second ice barrier somewhere. Mhm. Mm well, this is looking much better for Forsen all of a sudden. Yeah. 
Things exactly. did turn around quite a bit. Exactly. It's looking almost favored for him at this point because Thais has run out. Like the the uh, Archmage is gone. Forsen is high on health. There's no you know excruciating amount of fireballs about to come his way. So he needs to basically find Thais needs to find the burst from the deck directly if he hopes to kill his opponent. And I don't know if he'll have enough time to do so. Yeah, this is gonna. This is really interesting. Thais has those uh, two acolytes on board. So, um, sorry. Who's that? Uh, no, Forsen has the two acolytes okay. on board. Yeah, Forsen has the two acolytes, right? Sorry, right. Yeah. yeah, just double checking. Uh, so, um, yeah. Let's see. Forsen, Forsen finally finding his god. So, I mean, it was about time. So he's just gonna try to get. Sorry, what? Thais is running out of uh, damage. Yeah, I mean, that's what's I, happening. There's no fuel left. Both of them are. Hmm. Yeah, something else to consider is uh, if you if you have a heal bot and a cone of cold in your deck, that might mean that Tice possibly has cut the pyroblast. That would be a big deal here when you're trying to get yeah. the kill through uh, to a low health mage, and even then, like you have to kill it almost exactly because you then have to go to the block again, and you can't generate fireballs anymore. So. I feel like this game might still go on for a while, and both of these players are kind of unable to kill each other right now. We're just waiting for those fire blasts, because both the Antonidas are played, so there's not that many fireballs coming more. The burn is, is limited. It reminds me of playing Frost Mage in World of Warcraft. You would just frost over each other for days, and nobody did anything, ever. It kind of feels the exact same way. Funny enough, it's yeah. a decent translation of the playstyle in the game. Yeah, good times. Well, Orson decides he wants to draw more, which I guess makes a lot of sense. Yep. And he doesn't care about the the Emperor. Wow, well, I, I... He just know doesn't care at all. I guess he's seen Archmage Antonidas, so he says, you know what, it doesn't matter. Two heal bots for Thais. Wow. Well, that's what really on good. Earth? Yeah, okay. What a... Sick combination of cards here. This turn is interesting because he can actually mill force him for so much here. How many cards is getting burned? Like, oh my goodness. I don't think is he burning any. I think he's burning a few. Yeah, he's burning like two he's cards. He's burning yeah. like how many? He's burning at least two. No one. It's only the one. He has eight in his hand right now, and he's showing three more. And he's so he lost Doomslayer and another. And he, yeah, two. And he's he's almost out of cards as well. So yeah. we haven't seen a pyroblast from Force in either. It might just get milled, just you watch. There it is. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's show the pyro. Let's do it. Oh, damn. Blizzard. So there's oh. no pyro then. Okay. And he's out of cars. So it's just yeah. a matter of time before Thais wins this? Yeah, it seems so. Like, the, Thais can use all of his stuff just to heal himself. He has uh, those two heal bots and the Alexstrasza. I, I don't see a way for forcing to kill Thais. I really don't see it. Fatigue, maybe no. Like, Not, well, just how how far is Thais away from being fatigued? Because that that is the other factor we need to consider. But even then, Thais still <laughs> could heal up. It's just that Forsen will accelerate the clock a little bit by did playing the fireballs. That? Was it nine cards? <laughs> how did that happen? Uh, I don't know. Don't ask me. How did that get turned around so fast? Wasn't Forsen the one who had no draw? Well, I think it's. Forsen had two loot holders in his deck, I think. Right. Uh, so that accelerated his draw slightly more. Yeah, and the Acolytes. Like, one of the Acolytes drew, um, drew three cards, and the other one drew two cards. Two. That's wow. really crazy. It is. We can't well, even see Forsen him. right now. Yeah. If you Forsen, you're still thinking, okay, there might be some hope. I mean, he figures that there's probably an Alex Straza, but he doesn't know about the two heal, but... This is quite painful. He's really I mean, you, you, you can't even go all in, or maybe you, like, you have to go all in, hope he, your opponent doesn't have that Alex Straza. Yeah, I think he has to go all in as fast as possible uh, before Thais has guaranteed Alex Straza in his hand. But now, Thais can even turn this around. I, I don't see any problem in just using the Alex Straza, yeah. of course. Uh, never mind. I think Forsen's initial hand really held him back, and then the transition into too much card draw really hurt him. 
Well, he he was the, playing you know, all of the cards, so I'm wondering. I wasn't like paying. I, I was paying attention, but I wasn't like looking at that carefully. Like, did he maybe play those double acolytes a bit carelessly? I think he could have avoided at least some of those turn cards, at least like one. Never play the second acolyte. Like, I, I don't. Why, why did he play two acolytes at the same time? I think it's very risky. It's something that's um like you just do it because he he maybe he he forgot that he wasn't starving for card draw anymore. Like he was in the early game. Yeah. That's it, kind of how it feels. In that position, it just seems like you you would be better off never playing the second acolyte. Yeah. The the other thing to consider is maybe it has to do with uh, matchup and experience. The, like, how many times do you play freeze mage versus freeze mage on the ladder? Pretty much, like that never happens. I never. think in one one out of one hundred or two hundred games is freeze mage. And if you queue up with freeze mage, that's like one hundred, like one in one hundred chance, like one in ten thousand games is a freeze mage mirror. And I don't expect like these players play too much freeze mage mirror um, in practice, simply because it's really not that common in standard conquest formats. But I, I also feel about it that it's one of those matchups that hasn't really changed over time, and it's it's not it doesn't require like that much practice. I think so. If you if you play this in the past, you don't really forget how to play it. I think you don't need to give up your mechanics over this. It's like a mostly knowledge based thing. Yeah, it's what the old style think, anyway. And it's it's not that complex in my my opinion. Well, maybe you're underestimating how complex it feels to some of the other players, but maybe. it's kind of uh, I mean it's an old deck, right? Like it's been around forever and it hasn't really changed that much aside from the mana costs, but the general play style of it is still very much the same at its yeah, core. Yeah, throw away the AOEs and uh, Get the high value, as much value out of your, your big minions as possible. Forsen has to be conceding here. There's no way he's not conceding this, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, there, there it is. <laughs> I was, I was really surprised not to see the insta concede from Forsen, knowing that he knows enough about the matchup. He, his deck is empty. He's got what, 12 damage left in hand against a mage with ice barrier, ice block, mm -hmm. and that is, that's just not happening. All right, well. Nihilum is getting one win here. Thais uh, maybe helping equalize against uh, Shaki's win streak. Now, do you think they're going to send out the Freeze Mage again? Or. Um, it's it going to switch. Again. So, like, if there's that thing that um, they force him, boys. I mean, if, uh, um, if, if, um, if Nihilum thinks that they're not sending the Freeze Mage again, then they can. Send whatever sucks against freeze mage, but if the if force boys predict that they're sending something sucks against freeze mage, they just might queue up it again. And uh, I think that there's a lot of like uh, random stuff here. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like, there's no way to to, to get the, get an accurate prediction. You just have to like place your bets. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I, I want to go back to that point where Tice he had double heal bot and Kona Cold in his deck, and I also want to tie that in with the fact that life coach. He ran a like a demon warlock instead of a standard handlock, and I think both of these choices are gears towards anti aggro. We saw last week with uh, Nilum versus Value Town, where Nilum they basically based their entire lineup against the handlock of Trump that they expected Trump to play with things like double BGH and handlock, double BGH in Druid, running Mech Shaman, running doubles Hunter's Mark in the um, in. And Hunter, and even running a BGH and Patron Warrior. So against Forsen boys, they don't run Handlock, but they tend to run a lot of aggro decks. And, so it wouldn't yeah. surprise me at all if all of the Nilum decks were teched against aggro. That makes yeah. sense, but Shockey's already through, so that's going to be a bit painful if all the decks are supposed to be somewhat tailored against aggro, because they definitely did not pass the test. You know, if there's one team in the league who would make that uh, strategy that specialized, I definitely think that it's gonna be Nihilum. Like they, they, they can do some uh, really. They, they, they put. Uh, this is just my uh, what, what I'm thinking and what, what I think is true that um, Nihilum probably prepares the most for these matches. I know that they even during assembly summer uh, last weekend, they, they do between the games like they, we couldn't get them to cast games and stuff because they were like okay we need to talk strategy and they were like they were talking strategy every day and night and just uh, going to their own place <laughs> and, and they were planning it so carefully I was actually really impressed like holy like how, how carefully they were preparing and uh, I'm sure that they have prepared really carefully for this one too so that, their their entire lineup just could be uh, could be an anti-agro one. 
Well, it's gotta help. I mean, RDU is a player who's very cautious about his lineups, right? Like, he's always bragging about how they're the best lineups ever. If you ask him about mm -hmm. any event that he's attending, you say, what do you think of your lineup? He's, oh, it's the best. It's always the best. <laughs> um, and then when it doesn't work out, so, you know, it's the luck of the draw that happens, but I was still confident in my lineups. So, turns out RD is going to be facing off against Oskaka. He's going to be bringing out the Mech Shaman again that we saw a little earlier lose in the first match with really horrendous draws. Maybe he'll do a bit better against Oskaka. Um, again, expecting Patron, probably. We'll yeah, see. Should be. I would expect uh, a Patron from Oskaka. He's really confident in the deck. I've seen him play beta punch. And uh, it would be a shock. If, if he's playing control, it's definitely not because he would think control is better, but it would be for some reason that he. He thinks that control would be spectacularly better against Nihilum, and I doubt that's the that's the case. Yeah, I mean, unless you're targeting the freeze mage, I guess from their yeah. player. But even then, it's one deck. You'd have to really gear it towards a, maybe a wider array of decks. And there's not that many against against which it's you know stellar. Although we did see Trump play it a bit earlier. Um, it did lose two matches, but I think ultimately. It wasn't that bad, but the, like that bad of a deck for Trump. So it's still a deck that has its place in the metagame, and although it's weak, it's weaker to weapon hate maybe than Green Patron is. Maybe mm -hmm. that's the reason why in a tournament where you can tech that weapon hate pretty much everywhere, it's less seen. Yeah, I would actually yeah. argue that the Patriot Warrior is weaker to weapon hate simply because the Death sure. Spite is so much more valuable. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's a good point. Because you do need the, the AoE to really get the whole combo going. So yeah, you're right. Possibly right. I, I think there's... Even though Oskaka is also known for uh, Control Warrior, he hasn't played it in a very, very long time. Uh, so I, I would say like 95% this is going to be a patron. And indeed, it's going to be a patron. All right. Well, let's see what uh, RDU's starting hand looks like. How would you rate this matchup? I think Shaman is actually not that bad I I against Patron. It feels like they're playing Zoo sometimes. Yeah. And uh, that's well, very hard for Patron to just over overrun. Stats-wise, it's a very low sample size, but it's 9 and 5 in favor of the Mech Shaman. So at least Mech Shaman yeah. has some chances. Yes, yeah, so okay. you, you seem to be pretty surprised by that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I think that they have... The, although the mech shaman does have a lot of big threats, and usually there's not enough executes for the for the warrior. It's just that uh, the mech shaman is so so volatile. If it draw, if it draws those spells early, and if it doesn't curve out nicely with, I could say, Gog Master into Annihilation, um, I, I just don't feel that uh, it's that consistent. But I, I'd be really interested to see uh, like a 100 game uh, statistics for for this okay. matchup. Yeah, again, like you mentioned. Um, it, Patron Warrior definitely, it doesn't often have a lot of executes for those Fell Reavers or enough executes. And uh, I feel like I feel like RDU's list, it's going to not have those Fell Reavers, not going to have Ragnaros or Dr. Boom. So that could change the matchup uh, definitely as well. Yeah. Okay, that ghoul is pretty well timed here. It's going to easily take off the, the Divine Shield from that. That annoyance from so then, uh, then the weapons can get through afterwards. Yeah, I think that's even annoying enough to possibly Earthshock. I mean, yeah, I that's what I was to. thinking. I would consider Earthshocking this. I mean, the problem is then Armorsmith and Acolyte of Pain are on your mind, and those feel really awful since you can't deal with them yet. Yeah, the Earthshock is bad, but I think he has to do it. Well, otherwise, this is just gonna like rip off all the Divine Shields from their no turns and like, what do you even do it for next? What do you do it to it next? Uh? Yeah. Well, the question with Earthshock is: Is there any merit to? Toteming instead of Onohatron, or possibly the spell power totem. Okay, so 25% chance of killing that ghoul and losing your shield. The problem is, I guess, then you're vulnerable to a weapon hit, and then you lose the board, and then re-establishing it might be a bit difficult. Um, since it, in the case where he has a weapon, your shredder gets popped right away, and maybe you can't guarantee a good follow-up. But uh, but I see your point. I think it, that kid might have been a consideration of his. Definitely. You saw he took his time, and he really had only one line of play, so... Yeah. He definitely so here, thought about that. Yeah, here I would expect to see the Flyer War. It's probably Corsair too. Like, do you have to hold down to it? I don't think so. It, it dies to a, to a um, uh, Power Maze, but uh, it's still kind of fine. Then you can deal with the Nitron with the second uh, Flyer War Exchange. Yep. There we go. Yeah, it's this, a really this powerful feeling, board. 
Now this is a really great start for the for Ostkaka here. Those double weapons. The Shaman Hand wasn't awful, but it was not quite uh, crazy good either. That unstable no. look was so huge. The Urchuk still, uh, even though it allowed him to bypass it, the, the, the one, two is just still doing work, popping those Divine Shields off the Neutrons. Yeah. The Neutrons are usually pretty good against Warriors since they stop weapon hits, but you can't just rely on Neutrons alone. You need something behind it. And I feel like the Neutrons are slightly weaker in Mech Shaman than in Mech Mage, because Mech Mage runs the Cog, uh, the Cog Masters. And you can set up those cog masters behind the neurotrons, where that doesn't actually exist in. Um, no, they still run it. No. Oh yeah, they I, still. I, sorry, the uh, right. cog masters and cog um, and the uh, clockwork gnomes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the one minute two ones. Those get so, recurring damage. So it's damage less likely You're right. for you to have the one drop. You're right. Right. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, okay, he's not going for it. If Ost Kaka was just uh, overriding them. The fire warax here to play the dead spider and use that one instead, because it could have set him up with the. Uh, Patron coin world with next turn and yeah. to get four uh, patrons. You know, I was gonna say that Mech Warper wasn't gonna do much, but then this happened, and suddenly it's picking up two minions oh. to play in one turn, and that might be the turn that Artie is looking for because he's gonna be out of overload for turn six with a good fire elemental hit. Yeah. So this is getting a bit better for him. That's problematic, not getting any of those uh, attacks through though. It's yeah, gonna no, die, to, die to that um, no mission vendor quite easily. Yeah. Oh man, Pro probably still not enough though. I mean, Ostaka yeah. can clear this entire board. He can set up a million patrons next turn. Yeah, and he can even deal with the fire elemental with just the fire with just the death spite. Yeah, the execute happening is just so devastating. Mm -hmm. oh, the shaman down to one card. Well, he's gonna draw another one here, but still, the damage is not quite done yet. The warrior is still at 23, and uh, and seems like it like he will go off with those patrons next time. This is such a devastating position for RTU because he's like, okay, if he doesn't have the patron, and he doesn't have the execution, and he doesn't have slam, and he doesn't have anything, then I win. Yeah, but I mean, it's like this is such a huge time. if. Is this the doomsayer time? Would be so crazy. <laughs> Let it Everyone be out of here. Let it happen. We need it once, just once. Doomsayer, go. Oh, uh, maybe we get a blink out of Oskaka if there's a Doomsayer. So oh! oh! No way! He smiled. Oskaka smiled. There's an emotion on this image. You have got <laughs> to be kidding me. This. Wait, that's just happened. <laughs> History just happened. This is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I think e sports. <laughs> I don't even know what to scream at this point. This is just Our wow. Buddy, you... It's still taking it in stride though, and I would still kind of put him in advantage since he does have a lot more. Cards. Even Oskaka, yeah. yeah. Oh, Oskaka is still ahead. Yeah. I I'd venture to say you're right. Yeah. It's still funny. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, um, Sorry, I can't recover from that dude uh, down the board in the most desperate of situations. I'm uh, actually happy that the Oscar guy is still gonna win because that would have been that would have that was just that's too much. I mean, RNG, sure, it can be like fun sometimes, but there's so much on the line, and if that Doomsayer right there decided the entire game, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you would have been pretty. I, I don't fault you for that. I mean, I don't like. Like, it's funny as a viewer to look at that and just laugh at the ridiculousness of it, but when you actually look at it from a design perspective or an esports perspective, it becomes ridiculous to think that this could have just won the game single-handedly. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's why there's, like, these hidden uh, p hidden piloted Shredder Nurse in the next expansion, right? Right. With all the two <laughs> drops that have, like, negative death rattles. Yeah, getting those mana crystals destroyed and stuff. <laughs> So how many two drops that are bad are they gonna have to make in the game just to nurse Shredder, right? You know, Doom's Doomhammer could still be a big deal. It's far from over. The damage output is not yet lethal. There's no whirlwind effect to make that frothing just shine. Uh, no battle rage to replenish the hands. So RDU could still get a Doomhammer with that rock biter and just maybe power through. Oh yeah. man, if we got the Doomhammer. Oh there's well. There's like no armor games. Yeah, and now the issue is that these totems are actually a liability, just powering up the Frothing Berserker. Uh, yeah. Not only that, but there's typically no Flame Tongue totem in this version of Mech Shaman. 
So it's gonna Seems be like it. Yeah, even, even the Doom Hammer, it's not gonna come in time. Like, there needs to be a way to answer the fraud thing, but there's no way to. I'm trying to think, if there's like fire elemental that he can cloak field after. Yeah, that and that into Doom Hammer, right? Gonna do it. Yeah, into Doom Hammer, but I don't think it would be. No, it would still not be enough. You would live, though. Yeah. So he could, if he gets Fire Elemental now, Cloak Shields it, then follows it up. Never mind. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. Cloak well, Shield, he's going uh, to lose the game uh, after uh, all, but uh, that was a pretty eventful game nonetheless. I mean, hell, it's not every I'm, day you see that. I'm just, uh, the Doom Sayer, like, oh my god. Maybe he should have played around it, he was so far ahead already. No, yeah, I mean, course, what is the one out of sixty-eight or so, or something? It's, that was just ridiculous. Well, well, at least we got to see that. So it's unfortunate for RD that he loses again with his uh, shaman list. Um, again, it's the second loss in a row with this shaman for RDU. He's got to lock one in, and you know it's a conquest format. He can't just hope that his teammates get the win eventually. So he's gonna have to hopefully. Like I hope for him that he's not gonna be backed in a corner like he was um, in one of the first few weeks that they played. I think on week one, RDU ran into a lot of trouble. Yeah. Well, RDU still has some decent matchups. He still has the Druid coming from Oskaka. That's generally a favorable matchup. And he has the Freeze Mage from Forsen, which is seems to be pretty good for RDU since that deck does run double Doom Hammer. He definitely, though, def doesn't want to run into the Zoo from Forsen, or what we expect to be Zoo. Yeah, right. I'm I'm trying to think if there's another if there's a chance that Oskaga's Druid is gonna get cornered again and like uh, it's if it's gonna be the last class and then struggle again because there's quite a few bad matchups for it I feel like yeah the they, they decide to target life it coach. well that that one should be fine but the life coach is even playing the the demon version so I think that they they might be they might be okay that's, oh, that's the giants. Like, there's less chance. We didn't see, we see them, saw the Molten, so it's still good. But the, the big swing is usually when the Druid plays the turn four or five Mountain Giant, and it gets immediate, immediately hunted. Later on, like the Molten, it's kind of like okay, you can maybe aff even afford to have it hunted. But um, those Void Callers, if you manage to get, uh, let's say, uh, like a like a Doom card out of it fast, the Druid really struggles dealing with that five seven. Yeah, not only a Doom guard, but Jurassic is going to be hard to deal with as well, especially. Oh, yeah. against if it's an Argus buff, like how are you going to deal with a four or sixteen? It's almost impossible to do it. I mean, recycle is not exactly popular in the meta, and uh, Sylvanas is quite often the only way to to deal with that. But even that might get silenced or, or not even be in the list. Yeah, yeah. we've seen uh, way fewer Sylvanas's in Druid list. It's just it feels a little slow in the meta game right now, where uh, like Patron Warriors dominant. There's like a lot of aggro decks, and you probably want that slot for things like Ancient of War. Well, I, it reminds me a bit of that situation but before the, um, I mean, after the immediate Sylvanas nerf that made her go from five mana to six, where all of a sudden, were you better off playing other cards than her? Because she felt a little slow in a few archetypes. Um, and now we're at that point where suddenly Druid doesn't even have the room to put her in because they need to tech against so much stuff, being that they don't have the spot removal that they need. Yeah, it used to be in there before Ember, almost like a staple because right. of uh, because it was a six mana card and it was really powerful. But now with the, like double force of nature also being six mana, even though you might not always want to cast it on turn six, it's uh, you you got that Ember, and so you you might not be as desperate for a for a powerful six trip. So right. Forsen, um, he's played Malagos Warlock in the first week of Archon League, but. He's played Zoo in every following week, so three Zoos, one Malagos Warlock, and I mm -hmm. definitely would expect him to... Uh, I mean, I think Malagos Warlock does make sense against Nellum, though, because they're running the uh, Handlock. You can definitely expect a Life Coach to bring Handlock, and I think, it, indeed, it's going to be Malagos Warlock. Wow. That's yeah, a good call, like Monk. Did you, did you ask them beforehand, or are you just that good at stats? No, mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. Makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, um, I think what most people consider about the Malagos Warlock deck is that it's like around 50-50 against everything, but it's like one good matchup or one like amazing matchup is against Handlock. And in competitive play, it's 78% against Handlock, 7 to 2 stats. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, uh, one big reason for that is that uh, the Malagos lock tends to run 
the instrument, uh, the double BGH, and I, I guess the, that's the other other reason is that the Malikas Volk simply can burst the, the handlock down before the Moltens get played. Yeah, a bit like uh, Freeze Mage sometimes has a well, I mean, not sometimes, but they tend to have a decent matchup against Handlock unless the Handlock gets the mountains early. Because very often it's just a one two punch and the opponent falls down, and that's kind of how Malagos Warlock tends to play. Forsen's falling asleep, but we'll keep him awake. Yeah, well, <laughs> he, he's complained before that he hasn't gotten enough sleep for these Archon Team League matches, but I saw that he tweeted earlier that he got at least four hours of sleep, so it's nice. All right. Yeah. Also, for a very, very smooth transition, if you guys want to tweet, you can do so with hashtag ATLC if you've got any comments about the league. That was smooth. You have to say that was smooth, Monk. Very smooth. Very smooth, very smooth I know. Pretty smooth. Super <laughs> smooth. All right, so what's this looking like? So this has to be patron, obviously. It's just that the, the way that Life Coach plays it, yeah. I feel sometimes, like, I've seen Life Coach play a lot of Patron, and he takes some lines of play sometimes that I find uh, a little weird. Yeah, he has his own style, definitely. I've seen, seen yeah. him play uh, quite a bit, but he, he consistently does well with it. Mm hmm. Yeah. It no further comments. <laughs> I don't know how to like specify exactly what makes his gameplay so different, but I also noticed it that, uh, like, the decision making in some of the turns that uh, I would expect some other, like, uh, Kind of famous patron plays like Zalei do, uh, just differ a lot. They like, um, yeah. Okay, uh, so many minions uh, for here right now. I feel what's the most infamous uh, coaches is uh, just last week, Archon team. I can reconstruct the message. Trump. You're roboting a bit. Yeah, monk. I heard Life Coach last week, Archon Team League Trump. So I'm guessing it means that one of the most interesting games that you saw Life Coach play with Patreon was probably against Trump last week. But if I'm mistaken, you can correct me. Like he'll correct me when he comes back. All right. Well, at so least there was an exciting game last week, which was exactly those two mm -hmm. players. So yeah. <laughs> All right. So it turns out uh, the Death Spy is going to take care of this uh, poor five four. It's not going to do much. Like. This is a weird card to play against, like yeah. Warrior in general, the uh, Corruptor. It's looking quite good right now for uh, for Life Coach, I would say. I don't feel like Forsen has enough threats to really pressure. And uh, mm -hmm. well, he still need, Life Coach still needs some cards, sure, but it seems that he has a lot of the tools that he needs to be able to burst uh, Forsen down. And uh, and uh, he also seems that he, oh wow, uh, I was seems gonna, gonna say gonna have time for it. The only thing that's really missing for, you know, life coach here, I was going to say, is Emperor Thorsen. Because once you get that, anytime you find your combo pieces, you've got the rest to go with it. So it's just a matter of getting them a little later. And you've got time, right? Like, you're not under pressure. So playing Emperor as soon as you have the cards that you're looking for is just going to win you the game right away. <laughs> All right, getting those straws. Yeah, Emperor is such a strong card in Patron. Like, it's funny, like, as as many decks as it enabled, and really Emperor did make a lot of decks better a little bit, none has been made much better than Patron was. Like, as soon as that card came out, it was an obvious fit in Patron, and yeah. I think it single-handedly wins so many games. Definitely. Every single combo deck got a lot of benefit out of it, but uh, Patron is really enabled by it. It's so key. Getting those, uh, getting those, for example, the zero mana whirlwinds. Uh, it's, uh, it's so huge, and uh, also squeezing in the bait, both the patron and the frothing at the same turn with the charge. Okay, force and try and get some kind of board going, but it's it's pretty rough. It's gonna How have to be a bit slow. Have? How much burn does Forsen actually have? He has like double dark bomb into. He's got 13 with just the spells, but no spell damage to go with them at this moment. Uh, he needs to burst to get some damage done with his minions, which might be kind of tough to do. It's a bit awkward. Yeah, it sure is. He's gonna, de he's gonna deny his opponent the card draw with the Acolyte, like the double card draw, mm -hmm. and the minion I mean, position on the board for the Frothing Whirlwind eventually. Coach's hand is already full, though. <laughs> so many cards. I don't even like. There's so many options. I'm sure, he wants to cycle here, but I mean, uh, 
Yeah, probably not the Emperor then yet, because you, you really want to deal with that Drake. So maybe like Slam and use the Fire War Axe. Yeah, I think so too. I think Slam Fire War Axe is one of the safest plays. I mean, you can even play Shield Block on the back of it if you feel like it. He's getting really close to just getting the lethal. If he finds the, if he finds the Warzone Commander, it's like I, I think he has everything he needs. He just needs that one turn to uh, to get the, to, the, to play the Emperor. One turn to play the Emperor, and then. Uh, yeah. Oh okay. wow, he's so just gonna go for it, and there it is. I mean, he's getting Whirlwind for cheap, he's getting the Ghoul for cheap, he's getting the uh, Grim Patient for cheap, so I guess overall it's a good deal. And he's also forcing his opponent to deal with a 5-5, five -five, uh, which yeah, when you're true. Warlock, it's a little weird unless you're using you know, Siphon Soul directly. You have to use Abusive BGH and whatnot. Yeah, I kind of like this, it puts the pressure on uh, on the Warrior, but the force is instantly going for the Abusive BGH, and that's a really... Really strong play in this situation. There's no no targets for the big game. That's as good as it gets. Life coach doesn't have the war song commander. You know, I have to start asking if you weren't right, maybe about waiting to use the emperor when you have the cards that you're looking for. But I think life coach was afraid that suddenly Forsen would start dropping the big bombs, and then he doesn't yeah. have the execute for like just a a plain Malagos. Could have been. Plus, he, he, it's kind of well, like now the card draw, the slams and the shield, shield block, they are, they are um, more like they're, they're cheaper now. I, I think he might feel that he got enough discounts off from that. Like, he has the zero mana whirlwind, he has the one mana ghoul, there's the inner rage already. So, um, as, as soon as he draws the, the war song, the, the, he, enough of the combo pieces are discounted already. So, I think that the, the patron might have been quite good. Uh, I mean, not patron, I mean, the. The Emperor, might have been quite the Emperor good. Yeah. yeah. So he picks up his Battle Rage after all said and done. It's pretty much the card that's going to enable him to just draw the yeah. rest of the deck. Still like literally the entire rest of the deck. Yeah, still no Warzone. I mean, if, if both of his Warzone commanders are at the bottom, this the lad isn't chance for Warzone to take this. But that's what it. But that's what kind of what needs to happen. I feel like. Well, how much damage does he got? Like 17 right now. If he wants to push with light, like if he want to, if he wants to push with everything, he's got 17 damage. It's still short yeah. of killing his opponent, but we know that all it takes for him right now is to get a bit more damage in this turn, and he might be able to do it on the following turn. Maybe he really needs to count up in here and try to set up the lethal for next turn. If it's if there's any way he can he can potentially do it. Uh, 24. So that's gonna be a. a Plus. Ten in the hand, well, not too bad. Yeah, he still can't. Uh, he still can't kill his opponent, but really, he's very close. And life coach needs to pick up something, not only to clear the board, but to put the pressure back on. Because right mm -hmm. now, he's the one who's playing from behind. He can't get the AOE from that spy just yet. No Arson commander. So, mm, but as soon as he draws it, I, I think this ends. But if he doesn't draw it, then uh, yeah, wow. Wow, another inner rage. That's not even close to what he was he was needing right now. I guess you could go for a half battle rage, sort of. Like you go um, Grim Patron, inner inner rage. It's pretty bad. Whirlwind battle rage. I mean, you're gonna draw four cards. It's not that terrible. Yeah, like you're guaranteed to get your minion next turn. The thing is, like, how dead are you right away? He's, he's actually like really dead. He needs to find an execute <laughs> and um, yeah, he does. And, like he a shield dead. block. Because uh, with that 10 damage in Forsen's hand... Yeah, I don't know, it's one of those situations where even though Patron is really a dominant deck, like not finding a Warzone Commander is pretty much a loss. Yeah, I've seen this a few times, it's not the first time the, the, the Warzone is the missing combo base. That's definitely one card that you need. Uh, in one of, in some of the older older versions of this, the people were running things like uh, like the chromash. Then sometimes you you can be able to just use the weapons and uh, like maybe with some of the minions that you played earlier, you might be able to get enough damage okay. together. But but in, in this list, it's just uh, if you don't get the war song, it's just not happening. Yeah, well, he did get it after all. It took like forever. He found the war song commander, but now forced into just going for lethal. Yeah. That's Slime, Hellfire, Dark Bomb, and that's gonna be a good game. That's pretty unfortunate for Life Coach not drawing it, but uh, it's a, a little. It makes me feel a little warm inside. But the <laughs> one of those decks, when it loses, right. I, I don't feel too bad. So. 
Uh, I mean, it's one of those things that's so good that when it loses, you're like, wow, okay, so somebody did it. I guess that's good. Um, yeah. I guess it deserves some of the losses here and there. It has to. Yeah. All right, so Forsen's locking the win with his Malagos Warlock. That was uh, that was not the zoo that we thought he would bring. Yeah. I really oh, thought he would bring zoo, but he well, switched up his though. gears and played pretty well, so it worked out. Yeah, it's the Malagos versus Patron matchup isn't even that bad. Um, it's 13 to 11 in favor of Malagos, so it's uh, it's even favored. Although I'm sure 6-0 would say otherwise. <laughs> Every time yeah, of course. Like, like Sixo would say otherwise. Like, if you ask Sixo, I guess uh, Patreon beats everything. Well, I mean, it does beat. Uh, like, it's kind of like Miracle Rogue, right? It had mm -hmm. bad matchups, but not really. I mean, it had, I guess, Face Hunter as the worst, but the rest was pretty much manageable. You wouldn't have a super favorable matchup, but if you, you know, play the deck like optimally, on average, you'd be able to beat everything most of the time. Oh it's, yeah, it's kind of in that exact spot. I feel. Yeah, I think that's true. Well, we'll see what they bring out next. Now, are they going to throw out? Uh, I mean, Forsen, Forsen boys are four one right now. Shocky's yeah. done. Oskaka's got to win with Druid, and Forsen's got his freeze Druid. mage left. Maybe if he picks up a better draw, he can do better. But if they okay. win anytime soon, they're going to have the best score that that has ever been had in the league so far. Yeah. Well, well, you know. Uh, Nilum has gotten to this point before where they were down, I believe, 5 1 against Liquid, in fact, and they actually just came back winning. I'm guessing winning. five games in a row. They just came back winning, like Charlie totally. Sheen. Absolutely, that's what he okay. was about to say. Okay, so um, winning like Charlie Sheen, I get it. Well, yeah. Monk is having a lot of connectivity issues uh, today, unfortunately, so hopefully, as soon as he's back on, we'll get uh, the end of the commentary. Mm. Freeze Mage and Druid, that's pretty interesting. Okay, I, I could imagine both of those decks struggling a little bit. But uh, the, the Freeze is uh, almost certain to squeeze that win at some point. Even though there's almost all the bad matchups are there. Warrior is, is, is bad, Druid is bad. The Shaman is, well, now that I'm so, looking at it, it seems like all bad matchups for the Mage. Yeah, for Mage, I, like every single thing here looks like it's bad, maybe besides Handlock. That's like the closest thing yeah. to, you, you would win. And now the question becomes, if you expect Force and Boys to pull out the Druid, what do you queue? I mean, Shaman and Hunter are both kind of acceptable. Um, you could play your own Warlock, but not really. Like, it, it, mm -hmm. Demon Lock is okay. Uh but the typical handlock is a little less. So Oskaka's going to be putting down the Druid, and they're all going to go for Shaman, which is probably the better matchup they had against uh, that Absolutely. specific deck. That's a very one-sided matchup. But um, and, and if, if, if things don't go wrong for the Shaman, he should be able to take it down. But the Shaman is, uh, like we talked when he talked about it when, uh, when he was playing it the previous time, the Shaman yeah. is a deck that sometimes defeats itself and uh, just getting all those spells and not curving out so nicely. Yeah, getting all the bad draws is pretty much the curse of Mech Shaman. We'll see if RD picks up a much better hand this time, because his past games haven't exactly been super good. Although he did get that Doomslayer. So, you know what? <laughs> that makes up for it. Oh, yeah, that looks a lot oh, better. Oh, what a hand. Those two, uh, two spells, like Lava Burst and Crackle, are a, a bit early. But, um, definitely. The other cards are great, and, uh... From Ostkaka, that's not a not a very good start. He, his first play is on turn four. Cockmaster is such a huge steal if you get it on turn one. It can easily get that no, for at least nine damage in. Wow, and the Zabomatic. I would expect him to go Mech Warp and going out the Zabomatic here. That is so strong. That is such a sick play. And there is nothing Oskaka can do right now. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Wow, he needs to pick up a Wrath or an Inner right here. Even a Wild Wrath would be kind of not so optimal. Oh my goodness, how much damage is that already? The Zabomatic is gonna connect for 6, the rest of minions for 5. So that's already... Oh, wow. oh my goodness! RDU, Another... you know, this makes up for every bad draw he's ever had, yeah. ever, period. Ever. Wow. 
And what do you uh, kill, right? You want to kill the Zapomatic, but then it doesn't solve the problem with the flame tongue moving one ways, like one way to the side, buffing the mech warpers. You're still getting hit in the face for a lot more coming right up. Yeah, I mean, after this flame, like the damage is already done. There's a lava burst and a crackle. There's no way for them for the druid to even clear more than one minion on next turn unless he finds a, an inner weight for a force of nature. Innovate Force of Nature would be so, so good for him. It would be the only way to really clean this up. Uh, which one? The uh, Innervate with Force of Nature. It's like the, oh, okay. the only real way for him to clean it up. And he's not going to go for the Flame Tongue. I have to say I'm a little surprised. Yeah, me too. I, I'm really surprised by that. I think, this is to play, I think this is to play around my control tech here. What do you care uh, about mind tech? control deck? Even if the mind control deck happens, you still have like ten power on board. Yeah, well, at least at, at assembly last weekend, uh, Ardu got really wrecked by mind control tech. So I think he might just have yeah. be having nightmares and just really want to be playing around it. Although I don't well, think any play is particularly bad here. It's pretty yeah, good. I mean, it's, like it's working out bad. for him anyway, right? Well, I definitely I, I couldn't have resisted cashing in for instant six with the playing thing. <laughs> still having it on the board. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think uh, that uh, like, the only way to lose this right now is to disconnect. What to do? Because uh, the best of Kark, <laughs> he didn't pick up the inner rate, by the way. You know, so. you, you're very optimistic. All of you guys who are casting with us, we had Shocky earlier with the optimism. You're the same. Turns out uh, nobody believes in the heart of the cards. Aww. Well, he got an inner well, weight, so that's nice. Yay! Well, not just you're here to be like the, the angel on the side of the shoulder, right? Okay, okay, I get it. I get my role. I will settle in it eventually. <laughs> so it turns out there might be a lethal right away, right? It's over. Mm. With crackle and the phase damage? I think it's already yeah. done. Yeah! <laughs> what a game! You know what? I agree with you, Sarich. There was no hope. And it was, it was, he was on one health. Like, this is so crazy. Wow, that and this is why people play Mech well. Shaman. With that that kind of starting hand, there's very few things that can actually stop it. Um, maybe like a, a warrior with a fire war axe to kill the Mech for straight away, but I don't know. Like, it. but th that's just Mech Shaman things. When you play it a few times, so you get those nut draws every now and then. And uh, well, for this format, for ladder, like if you're trying to get high ranks with with uh, with Mech Shaman, you're gonna have a bad time because of the inconsistency. You can't reach that. Uh, that high win rate, but it's just sometimes you can run away with games completely, while other times it, uh, your first minion is a uh, fire elemental and then six. Well, on the other hand, you can also say that it might be just druid things and that he didn't draw wall growth or innervate early on. And That's we've true. seen Oskaka really fail with uh, druid in the first week of our con team league. And I've, I was talking to him just last weekend uh, in assembly. He was saying that he had nightmares after that, similarly to how you might have had nightmares of Eats after. Uh, you went uh, a, with a really bad streak with Druid, and he was even like considering not bring Druid in future lineups. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, Druid is still like all right, but it's just the, it feels so hopeless in those situations when you don't get the inner weight or the wild growth in the starting hand. There was nothing he could have done, nothing he could have done different. There's absolutely no way he could have won that game with any any move. No, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes you'll win with just about anything. Like, any deck can mm -hmm. get the draws and you can't stop it. Um, I mean, hell, I won turn four with a Murloc Priest against Grim Patron just last week. So, it's like, anything mm -hmm. in this game can win. Get, granted, you get the, the nuts draw. The thing that really distinguishes the decks is the consistency with which they get it. Like, Mech Shaman, even though, and you pointed this out, it's somewhat inconsistent. It gets enough good hands on average that it can still be relevant uh, competitively. Oh yeah, definitely. In a, in a format like the Arkham Team League, it's uh, it's a really solid deck, I think. All right. Uh, when so you have the six decks and all. What will Force and Boys keep playing? Just pushing Oskako again with Druid, or are they going to bring out the Freeze Mage? And they will bring out the Freeze Mage against Life Coach's Warrior. That's no good. Well, Nihilu might be pulling it back here, getting a couple of those uh, favorable matchups. I mean, the odds are on their side too, since uh, this is forcing boys with only two decks, so it's easier to get those nice matchups. But uh, I, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if, if uh, Nihilu was able to pull it back here and at least make it close. 
Yeah, we were looking at this matchup earlier. I think uh, in the the previous match, we had a game that went exactly like this: Mage versus Grim Patron, I think. Um, and you know, Monk gave us the cold hard math statistics on this, and it's like eighty twenty, more so than like ninety five percent, five percent, like it used to be. Uh, against yeah. a warrior, you would just always lose. Nowadays, the Emperor Thorsten really enables a bit more potential for the mage player to get those huge swing turns with Archmage, which wasn't the case before. So, yeah, exactly. The Emperor sometimes just does Emperor things where you get those uh, those one mana, one mana frost bolt, zero mana ice lances, and with the Nidus, and you get that extra bit of burn, which uh, previously was impossible. Uh, you were limited, like the Antonidas turn was really limited. What you can do is a uh, Exactly at 10 mana, you can get maximum of two, two uh, fireballs, but now you can potentially get like way more. So uh, the, the amount of limited burn is a little bit less limited if you have the time to time to like set it up, right? Right. Yeah. I think uh, Patron Warrior versus Freeze Mage, which we'll be seeing, it's one of the least understood matchups in the entire game, just because like it hasn't been played as much, and it's only existed uh, in the the past two or three months. I've heard of a lot of Korean players talking, and they're saying that this matchup it might even be favor towards Freeze Mage, even though like it, the common like thought is that it's fa definitely favored towards Patron Warrior. Although I think just generally, just given that both decks they have a lot of card draw and they're fairly like they're fairly slow decks, and that they don't do stuff until like turn six or so. Mm. I feel like it should be like one deck should win a majority of the time. If player, if both players know how to play optimally, I mean, I I think that Patron wins. I think it's I all know. about the way you use Armor Smith. Like I wanna, yeah, exactly. I wanna really emphasize that card because I see a lot of people throwing it out very early, and those games are the ones that I tend to just see snowball out of control for the mage because the warrior wastes the Armor Smith. If you get one good Armor Smith turn, very often the mage can't even go through the armor that you're stacking. Mm, yeah. That's exactly how I feel about it, because there's so many whirlwind effects in the Patron Warrior, and it's not that difficult to, to set up a crazy armor smith turn where you, where you just use your, your whirlwind effects on multiple minions. Mm -hmm. And against the Freeze Mage, you, you should have the time to set it up correctly. But uh, sometimes the Warrior maybe doesn't get any cards, or, or, or you're forced into making some weird plays, like play a, play a war song too early when you don't have an execute for Antonidas, or something similar so many things can happen but uh, the warrior like no matter how who you ask even even if you ask six so the warrior is his favorite here no that didn't work <laughs> out because six is always saying that the warrior is favorite of course well maybe we when he plays freeze mage players? he's favored you yeah. know yeah <laughs> even against freeze mage huh? even against freeze mage i'm favored wow mind favored. blown <laughs> I, I just feel like there's a lot of intricacies in this matchup, um, like based on how you use the Grim Patrons and how you use Battle Rage, like how much do you go into fatigue also and how much you draw into your deck. Yeah, I know Nairia from Team Liquid, he really likes to play the fatigue style in, in this matchup, but I haven't like seen him won that many games with it, but it's been really close many times, that's for sure. Yeah, it, it also... Um, like this matchup is like 12-5 just stats wise and it's 71% in favor of patron but mm -hmm. it feels like every one of those games i watch there's always at least like one and up to like five mistakes from either player okay all right well that's that's definitely possible i mean i could see how freeze mage doesn't necessarily lose but again, if I, I feel like if the warrior gets the armor smiths on time, I, I, I keep going back to this because it's not always possible. Sometimes they end up at the bottom of the deck, and the mage finds the combo pieces earlier than the patron does. Um, and in those cases, the mage could win. But with the amount of card draw in both decks, I feel like the patron is very likely to find those armor smiths and get what he needs, which makes Speaking the whole thing those. very difficult. Yeah, he has both of those already, and I, I think this might be a good. Uh good uh, sample of a game with uh, with those armor smiths just getting those 12 healing or whatever if, if he sets up sets it up that way mm -hmm. at least he and will have the poten he will have the potential to do it and uh, from life coach I would expect him to do so probably on the same turn as like some like patrons and uh, go for patron in a rage well, like funny enough, the the only player that I've seen not do it when he had the opportunity has been life coach 
Wow. I have seen him waste armor smiths very frequently. Okay. Well, about twice, I'd say. Like, I haven't watched every single game he made. But I think it's the only player that I've seen do it uh, often enough that I remember. So That's I hope really that somebody pointed it out. Uh, it happened uh, twice that I recall. Yeah, that maybe he prefers the more aggressive playstyle. I think Shio mm -hmm. also yeah. plays it really aggressive. And he's playstyle. Kind of yes. That that uh, play was actually pretty weird. Only summoning one patron there. You know, that's like, we were talking weird. about that earlier, right? Like uh -huh. we were talking about, hey, life coach takes these lines of play that I don't get. Can you explain them? And you you can't. I think the idea is to get the flame strike out as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, well, or I, set up a crazy armor smith whirlwind 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 effect, but. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess you still have to either use like double frostbolt or an AOE to deal with this board. Um, and I guess that's the rationale, but I feel like one of the uh, ways you like one of the ways you win the matchup is basically the freeze mage only has two ways to deal with patrons, and that's mm -hmm. one flame strike and blood mage Thanos into Blizzard, and both yeah. those deal three uh, plus damage. And one of the ways to win again is to like make your opponent waste one of the first of those AOEs and not and then develop a board of patrons so he can't have the second AOE. Okay, this this here, this right here, is where you get infinite armor if you want to, and force the opponent to AOE down your board, giving you another wave of 14. Like, this this would be one position where you could abuse it. Yeah, you could use so much if you wanted to go for it. But you also you give your opponent it? some cards, though. Doesn't matter. Like, he wasn't... He didn't you want to mill him. Right. Like, the point is to mill your opponent. Like, this matchup is almost always one to mill, right? Yeah. I, that's how I feel, or He's that's how it's. It. It. That's really interesting. Armor coach, let's see it. Forrest is like, oh my! <laughs> You've got to be kidding me! When are they going to uh, release that three mana card that removes all the opponent's armor? So after this play, uh, the the win condition from life coach is uh, like the easiest way, the most logical way to win is probably to just. Uh, not even try to kill Forsen, but instead just not let Forsen kill him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just wait. You don't draw yeah. Battle Rage, it's a liability in this matchup very often. Because um, yeah. if you draw, you very often mill yourself before the opponent. Here's, you know, a free 12 armor <laughs> for the warrior. How much is this? Like 12 more. Yeah, it's oh. crazy. Everyone, <laughs> get out of there. Forsen is like, I just heal botted him in a half. <laughs> <laughs> This is not right. Something's wrong. How many fireballs? Oh, <laughs> so painful. If you life coach at this point, you kind of want to armor up every single turn. I'm not saying that you don't uh, don't want to start armoring well on earlier turns already, but uh, now it's like a real, very I likely saw. possibility that person simply won't have enough damage. You know, here I think I attack the Acolyte of Pain, or I slam it, just to put Forsen on 10 cards, then he mills one, oh, and yeah. it makes him draw, like, a tiny bit faster. It's not like you're in a rush, anyway, to end the game. You're at, like, 52 health, very comfortably sitting atop the yeah. armor. There's, yeah. there's also some cards that you can mill that just end the game. Like, uh, if you mill mm -hmm. Alex Straza or Archmage Antonidas, or even Emperor, those Emperor. are just even huge. Emperor, yeah. Right. Those three big minions, they, that's like them, yeah. So he will try to draw a little bit. Yeah, let's see the burn card. Cards. Yeah, life coach at 54 HP. Okay. Well, that looks better. Not too bad for Horson. I would say that's almost the best card he could have uh, could have yeah. made. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, might have even been been the best card to mill. Maybe arcane intellect would have been even, but no, I don't know. It's like the same. And it's now we're go seeing... for the Alex. <laughs> um, it's happening already. Wow, yeah, putting we're... life coach down to 41. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're at least seeing <laughs> that awkward situation where um, because Forsen didn't have the second AoE of Bold Mage Thanos into Blizzard, he can't actually mm -hmm. deal with this board. So it's actually pretty smart from life coach. He made a similar play about two or three turns ago where he just made two patrons, and that was it, and he was happy, content yeah. with that. I think that, uh, that what he's thinking about, this is just my theory, and I might be uh, completely wrong, but it might be that uh, in this matchup, you don't really need the patrons to do like crazy uh, amount of heavy lifting. You can just uh, afford to spend them a bit earlier. Like uh, in some matchups, you, you need to really like use them to clear your opponent's board but, and stuff. 
Well, that's one of the main things. You can get those crazy charging things to, to clear your opponent's board, but no, like you, there's nothing to clear from the mage. Yeah. All you clear is that like the big minions with execute. I would have so liked that's, like, a reason to wait. I think like a slam on the patron, the three three, and then trade it into Alex to then execute, because you're getting a free patron off of that. I mean, it kind of adds up to the same thing. Oh, yeah, it's, end, it's kind guess. of the same thing, I suppose. Missing like, three. Yeah, you could have found another maybe AoE that would have mattered. Well... Force and drawing, and <laughs> it's an Emperor, but I don't, like, I, don't, I don't see the Emperor even giving him enough damage. Well, Emperor Thorsen, I guess if you get the Frostbolt Ice Lance and everything yeah. else, you're fine. But look at this, the, the Acolyte of Pain is just going to mill Thorsen even further. Life Coach oh, has man. to try to abuse that, given the opportunity. Yeah. If Forsen finds another, let's say, Frostbolt and then the Emperor, I guess he can, he can draw like four fireballs with the, with the Donatus, but mm -hmm. yeah. still, it's all like about four fireballs is 24 damage, that's still not enough. Yeah, like, those armor smiths, man. Life Coach saw the play, it was so obvious. It was like mm -hmm. the most obvious play in the universe. Yeah. And it just has carried him forward, that Alex draws are not even doing anything. Oh man. Okay. Well, I got life coach carefully here and choosing to. That's not a mistake. He could have drawn one more card by attacking with the patron into the acolyte first. Mm -hmm. But he only wanted to draw two cards. He wants to be careful with his, uh, the amount of the cards remaining in his deck. What if, what if you play Warsong, Ghoul, you inner rage the acolyte, smash the Ghoul <laughs> inside of it, and then attack face with your patrons? This would be such a sick play. Because it would mill the opponent so much. Oh my goodness. This is such a mill heavy play. It's just the craziest thing in the world. He didn't do like exactly that, but he, he did mill one card by doing this. He could have milled uh, two if he, if he charged the acolyte. Uh, the unstable kill. Mm -hmm. But he loses the whirlwind, I guess, so I could mm -hmm. see the reasoning behind not doing that. Yeah. It's also overextending in the AoE that the mage probably still has in hand at some point. Mm -hmm. Before the god, yep. that's double mill. <laughs> oh. He can now use that uh, like ghoul frothing as a removal, but this is getting interesting because if like a life coach uses his like one removal, which is the frothing kinda, on the emperor, there is a tiny chance that there is no removal for the Antonidas. Like if the Antonidas doesn't die, I I wouldn't call this over just yet. If life coach just draws planks. Oh, but he's not gonna use the Nova, so... Uh, he, he needs the Nova here to, to force out the... Um... Yeah, that's not gonna work at this. My life coach gets to save his stuff. Well, Force is going for the Desperate. Well, I hope this sticks play. So basically, he's hoping that if his opponent kills Doomsayer, the Emperor stays. And if he kills the Emperor, then he loses the Patrons and Doomsayer will reset the board. Uh -huh. So it's one or the other is going to be okay by him at this point, is what I'm thinking. Well, it's like if he... Hmm, if he went for the Nova, then to just the weapon is not enough to clear the Emperor. So uh, it would have had to be like a slam. I, I both the slams are probably played, so it would have had to be in like a, either, either a Warsong turn or... But well, he is going to do the Warsong here anyway. Yes, he is. Interesting. There might be a way for Forsen to set up the Antonidas next turn in a way where Life Coach cannot remove it. If there's no execute ready, then sure. Yeah. I mean, he still wipes the entire board here with the War Song and the Patient alone. He doesn't lose anything and he's forcing Forsen. Oh, that sounds weird. Forcing Forsen to have the, uh, the mm -hmm. AoE clear. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he's on 48 health still. Like, there's, there's absolutely no way Forsen gets through this, right? I, I mean, maybe there is. He's gonna get so many, uh, so many fireballs now. Like, this is actually pretty crazy. He might oh, that's so it. dangerous for, uh... Yeah. If the Archmage sticks, though, you're in I such a good position. I want to see the Archmage right now. Like, it, it, the Blood Mage Blizzard doesn't look bad, but... Like, if, the, if it's not gonna stick, it's... Like, now it's never gonna stick. Well, he does clear the war song with... You know this. what the problem with that is? Is what if there's a single damage source 
that the opponent yeah, can know. start reproducing the patrons with, like a single AOE, like that's by it override with a war axe. Yes, yeah. And so he would have, the, yeah, he would have to remove the war song. Like if he if he goes for it, he needs to Nova and remove the war song with like a Iceland. So Iceland, yeah. I think he's gonna go for Blizzard, right? Yeah, I mean, I can't really blame him for this. I yeah. guess. I mean, it, it looks pretty good. You can't so, all find that way. It's a safer play. So, uh, yeah, it, I think uh, the, like, the key key thing in the match right now is that where is the last execute from Life Coach? Unless I'm mistaken, there's one remaining. And uh, if he doesn't find it soon, it's possible that Archmage is going to be there for even multiple turns. Alright, so. Again, the amount of health that Life Coach has been able to stack is yeah. pretty ridiculous. But look at this. This might this be the is turn. This be crazy. Yeah. He even this picked could... up another Iceland. Yeah, this could be where Forsen is able to really make that Archmage Antonidas win the game on its own. Yeah. This could so be I, it. I want to see this. Yeah. This is definitely possible. And he's going to freeze he his opponent's weapon. Yeah. Forsen managed like... to put himself exactly in a position where he wants to be. Wow. How many cards are left for both players? Because this could come down to a really fatigue, uh, like a very specific fatigue moment. But now there's no way for Six Life Coach cards. to enable a whirlwind, right? At best, he's got what? Cruel Taskmaster, perhaps? To get like a ping on something? Mm hmm. Shield blocking for an answer here. Mm hmm. Alright, last video. Mm hmm. Well, did you get the removal? I don't know. Your cam's offline, so least, by the way. Is it? Ah, back in the game. There we are. All right, so back to the game. Seems like Forsen uh, didn't do anything special, and Life Coach picked up the execute uh -huh. that he needed, but had no way to enable it. He used what? Slam. Oh, wait, he has Shield Slam. What? Oh, Shield Slam. He wow. had Shield Slam to wow. kill the Archmage. Life Coach with the yeah. clutch plays. That was yeah, insane. Was There's yeah, only 24 damage left. He couldn't even enable the execute. If he picked up the execute first, I, I think he went for a battle rage though. So he did draw multiple cards and stuff. So it wasn't like he got exactly the one card. Uh, he, he drew two cards. You're right. You're right. Like he went uh, battle rage into shield block and then picked up the shield slam at the last second. And yeah. you, you know what would be nice though? The one time where you see that new card, Wrath Guard, get played and somebody shield slams it for 30. Oh yeah, the eventually, it's just gonna dies. Happen. eventually it's gonna happen, for sure. Yeah. In we'll a tournament. Shredder will pop it out, Warrior will be ready. And oh man, that, that shield slam, I'm still like... I can't yeah, it's over. insane. He, he didn't find it. Forza gets two more fireballs, he gets to go face with his Antonidas for extra five. Like, he, he wasn't out of it. I think he won. If there wasn't that shield slam, I think Forsen could have gotten this. Now my question is, is there another fireball left in that deck? Because if there is, this could change things. I've seen one be drawn. I haven't seen a second one. That's what mm -hmm. I'm starting to wonder here. Life Coach had to draw a lot of cards to get that shield, shield slam. So uh, I think that the cards, card totals are somewhat even right now. So there's like a chance that uh, Life Coach will be taking some fatigue damage too. And Sometimes. now... No weapon execute as possible. He's gonna have to try to wow. find a cool taskmaster, maybe. I don't think he's got any right now. Yeah. That no mission went, they're completely dead. There's like no way he can play. Could force and take this. This he is could. again pushing him far away from fatigue range. How much how many cars of life coaches? This is so critical here. I think he's got two left. Uh, he can't yeah. play Gnomish because that's going to accelerate his death. Yeah, almost out of cards. It's so close. If Life Coach had one less card. Yeah, he's on one card left, man. This is it. But now he's going to be able to put down Warsong oh, yeah. with the Frothing. Get a tiny bit more damage in. Yeah, I think uh, Life Coach still got this. So, yeah, the burn, amount of burn that Fortune has is in, in his hand, that's 18, plus with like the pings, but still. He's at 25 right now. Life coach is not gonna take that much fatigue anytime soon. 
Also, the throw thing is gonna start uh, start dealing a lot of damage. It's gonna yeah. be there for multiple turns unless uh, unless person fireballs it, and if he fireballs it again, it's another six going elsewhere to turn to base. Yeah, I don't know. This is the worst feeling. Mm -hmm. You know you've got nothing left. It, it, you know it always comes down to this, doesn't it? Like in this matchup, it's like it gets down to fatigue. Whoever drew maybe like if the if the patron warrior draws too many cards off of battle rage, you can get wins, but yep. it's still very difficult. And now you know you're dead. Yeah. If you don't fireball phase, and you know you're dead if you fireball minions. So yeah, person knows he's dead at this point. Like, there's nothing he can do. He's like five turns away. Actually, wait, he wouldn't die to fatigue, would he? Well, he yeah, he would end up dying to fatigue because his opponent could put him at exactly fatigue damage. The fireball minions die to fatigue. Fireball face die to the minions. Die to fatigue. It's like... Yeah, it's like one or the other. <laughs> it's like choose your poison. So what if you fireball the frothing and fireball face, right? Because that reduces all pretty much all the damage. I want to say, right, or almost all. I guess. I mean, I feel like you have to at least fireball the frothing, but it's, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not going to matter. Orson yeah. just doing a really easy, you know, fast math and maybe realizing there's no way he's going to take this. And gets out of it, and Nihilum is climbing back up. So they're 4-3 to three right now. Monk has deserted us. We are alone, Savits. So yeah, we had too many connectivity problems. Alright. So, well, I think we can do this. <laughs> I believe in us. So four to three for uh, you know Force and Boys who were really they, they mean they raced ahead initially. And now Force and Oskaka both have to win. One with Druid, you know, one with Freeze Mage. Um, yep. But th now we're getting to the point where both lineups are getting exhausted, and they have to start shoving possibly bad matchups into each other uh, to just see who can get mm -hmm. maybe the best of them. Those past two games were definitely like Nihilum got exactly the matchups that they wanted, both really favoring them heavily. But the, the key thing here is that we have to evaluate right now how good are the remaining matchups for uh, for the teams. And uh, even though Nihilum is the, is the one who needs one more win, I actually think that they, they still have quite all right matchup to to take the Force Boys out. There's a lot of decks that, that do well against the uh, Freeze Mage and uh, yeah. Druid, well. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Warlock from Life Coach could be a weak point. I mean, it could lose to the, um, the Freeze Mage, and mm -hmm. Druid doesn't do too bad against it either. I mean, it's a better version because it's demon-based, so I guess it kind of works a tiny bit better against Druid than the uh, the typical Handlock. But yeah. it's still not a sealed game, so maybe that's going to be the weak link of uh, Nihilum's lineup. Yeah, it's like the, that's gonna be really big. Like whoever gets the first druid win, I think, because Nihilum also with that druid and druid if no inner with no wild growth. Oh man, you're not you can't lose twice as if, as a Nihilum druid at this point. Yeah, and the thing is, Thais is a very well known player for druid. I think it's one of the first few decks that uh, he was known for playing very well, yeah. and that's what kind of got him into the pro scene in the first place. And so he plays the deck very comfortably. But then again, you know, when you get wild growth it innervated, there's really nothing you can do. Like a shade comes out early, shredder gets innervated out. You don't have yours. You're starting to play from behind already. Uh, anything you play gets answered before you can answer their stuff, and yeah, it just snowballs yeah. even faster. Personally, that druid, druid mirror is my least favorite matchup in the entire game because I feel I like agree. quite often you can just compare the draws and then you you can see it on turn three who's gonna win. Not always the case. There are some moves that you can make. Maybe sometimes you can innervate the wrong thing or go face to one attack too much. And uh, you can outplay your opponents, but um, it's, it doesn't happen <laughs> that often. But yeah. luckily, we are not getting the Druid Mirror here. Well, unluckily for Forsen, but, um, <laughs> but uh, for, for the viewers and for me, um, it's going to be a mage and and, uh, and uh, Druid. Well, it's one of those situations where Forsen is still trying to queue into that Warlock, right, from mm -hmm. Nihilum. And I get the feeling if they just keep doing this, they will eventually have it come down to Warlock versus Mage. Mage will win and then Druid can queue up into the Handlock and then Druid can maybe seal the game. Um, so yeah. maybe all they're doing is trying to, you know, brute force the entire Nihilum's lineup into getting Life mm -hmm. Coach to play. That's such a, like, uh, I'm trying to evaluate that because Druid, Druid in general is pretty good against, uh, against Handlock, but the, 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 thing, the fact that it's a demon Handlock mm -hmm. makes me... Uh, 
a little bit like uh, I'm unsure about how, how exactly it is. I think that it's it helps the warlock out because of that non-giant yeah. thing they on turn four, and also their lack of silences because there's only two keeper of the grove, so you can't like silence both drakes and both white colors. I'd say it's a I think it's a fifty-fifty for demon handlock. Um, like very often, I'd say handlock is a little behind against mm. uh, midrange druid, but the demon handlock version is equalizing the field because oh, you can yeah. get some free minions on the board to compete with tempo just with void caller alone uh, often enough that's that's good and it's going to give you the board presence you need to compete with what the uh, is doing yeah it also depends a little bit this there isn't one uh, like standard team on hand lock wrist right now so some of the deck choices if, if they, for example if there are deck cards none of the deck cards really hit the druid and they're all gonna be off so so um yeah, you, you, it's it's hard to tell. But does does he run a doom guard, for example? There might not be doom guard. A doom guard would be great against the druid if you manage to pull it out. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we go into the mage versus druid match. No wild draw. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so he is going to be able to get that shredder on turn three if he wants it. Little mm -hmm. little acceleration on the curve. Mm -hmm. And uh, Forsen closing his eyes in despair, rolling the eyes, rolling his neck, probably stretching it, or just raging, I don't know which one it is. Uh, two secrets, two scientists, oh man, never am I ever lucky. <laughs> but uh, he did pick up the Acolyte, so that's good, some card throw. And uh, okay, no, not too bad, I mean, there's a lot of things that he can, he can draw here. I think it's still fine, like he's getting redundancy yeah. in those two scientists. Like but, any AOE in his hand would be dead right now, and he didn't get any of that. He, he has quite a quite a right place, and those both of those scientists are likely to also give him secrets. Almost guaranteed, unless he draws the secrets right now. It seems that yeah. those, those will get the secrets. So and, it's not. Uh, he is guaranteed actually to get the, all his secrets now, because the the ice bear here, if it hadn't been popped by Thais right away. Yeah. Um, may, might have not guaranteed that this, the other secret that would come out would be Ice Barrier, but now, if he wants to, Forsen can just play his own Ice Block, if he rather yeah. do that, and uh, guarantee everything. Or just play the other scientist, get oh, the- Oh! oh that is so unlucky. <laughs> look, look at the face! Look at Forsen. Look at Forsen. Oh, Forsen. Forsen is the best player to look at while he plays, because he is so expressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first draw in the entire... Alright, so Whirling Zappomatic is happening. Okay, it's not that at least. Good for Forsen, oh. I guess. <laughs> Wait, that's bad, because Alex Strauss is never getting played. <laughs> <laughs> never getting played. Yeah. No heal bots. No Alex. Is this, is this real? Is this real life? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> Wait, Wait. I, I didn't realize how bad this was until I started going through the cards that were going to get played. Uh, seems like an alright turn for the shade. Or it's not mana efficient though. Like Judith uh, Claw would be more mana efficient. But I think it's fine, right? Like, do you take? I mean, you risk getting coin blizzarded, but then you can mm -hmm. still follow it up with decent minions. So yeah. it's not that terrible. Not too bad. It's it's a bit weird to play the shade on a really late turn. Mm -hmm. It's always okay. weird past this point. Well done, placing it in the middle. That's uh, to avoid the cone of cold. I actually can't remember if Forsen was running one of those or if it was the other mage, whoever was playing. Thais was playing, yeah. Thais was oh, yeah, playing Thais cone of cold. Cone of cold. Yeah. Forsen probably doesn't play. Uh, if, he, if he picks up the Frost Nova here, he actually has the full clear. Double Doomsayer for the win. But then the Keeper of the Grove just shreks you. You can't really go for that. You you gotta. I think if you're forcing you, you need a flame strike or you need to pull off the, the the doomsayer. Like you need one of those two things. So, some kind of card draw is uh, likely to happen. And the flame strike is really key. Yeah, he needs to pick up any AOE really just to stall a bit. Because as long as he can yeah. figure out a way to win to gain a few turns. Um, that's gonna be enough. The thing is, we have to keep in mind, even though Lothab is currently 7 mana, it doesn't matter, because the turn you play it, it's like, as long as it's played, when the opponent's about to wipe the board, even if you pay 10 for it, you're still gonna win. 
This uh, is actually a really good turn to play it because there's um, the Frost Nova will be unavailable after that effect. It guarantees him another 15 damage for the following turn. Yeah, I would yeah. absolutely go for the load up here. This is one of those times. Like the amount of damage that is guaranteed, all every single minion on the board will stick. He's gonna have two five attack minions, one three attack, one attack. I, I would absolutely go for it. But I can I can see that like if he wants to take it slow, like going for the Druid of the Claw. But then coin flame strike. Yeah, you're I, if, if coin flame strike hits, you are in a real like a world of trouble, and you know that you can use that Druid of the Claw later with the double swipe force of nature to finish off your opponent. Like, it's just getting that guaranteed 15 next turn, I, I couldn't have said no to the load up there. I agree. But, um, yeah, he, he likes to go for a little bit like more late game heavy uh, thing here, time the time is right. And uh, it might still be excellent next turn, as we see. Like, there might not be a frost now. I think the reasoning was, if I kill the mad scientist right now, mm -hmm. he's not gonna get a second ice block. Oh, yeah. So he Wait. actually opted yeah. to play it a bit slower, because okay. he so had to use Hero Power and the Narrow Bar to do that, otherwise he was wow. going to have to ping the Shade. Oh my god! How much is that? <laughs> so he has that uh, so much. 14 power on the board, and the Savage Roar is going to be... Then he can actually pop here with the Swipe. This is oh insane. My god. This is wow. pure insanity. Forcing is running out of time. Wow. Is this an actual case of force to nature and Sevis Roar? Is this one is this one of those? Because people always talk about those. I'm not yeah. sure. Wait, Seems can so you... like the force in nature is gonna be for the next turn, but uh, oh he has to he has to give force and do cards here, but that's not such a big deal. I mean popping the ice block. Yes please. Even yeah. has another swipe in his hand, so What's hilarious? And, uh, What's hilarious is the heal bot can't be played. <laughs> wow. That's the really hilarious part. Is Alex Straza can't be played, heal bot can't be played. Nothing yeah. he wants to play can be. Oh, okay, it could. It could actually. I lied. But then you can't play Ice Block. So you have to Nova Ice Block? It's actually not over yet. It's as not he, as quite weird over. As might sound. Because he yeah. has the Alex Straza. The thing is that if he wants to. He needs to Ice Block here. <laughs> Like Frost Nova, do. Doomsayer, he has to use the coin to Nova, well, right? The, 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 That's the block, sorry, yeah. Yeah, then he doesn't have the coin for the for the Alex Straza anymore. <laughs> yeah. So he can heal, but as soon as that Nerebor Weblord is gone, which is not anytime soon. Wait, what? What? Didn't he attack with Darkolite? Yeah, he doesn't draw? want the draw, I guess. I'm not sure, actually. What What was that? I think the Force is just tilting right now. <laughs> He's just on full tilt. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Well, oh, you know nice. what? If, if this ends up... Like, he has to kill the Doomsayer. Because if he goes oh, yeah, to pop... Definitely. If he goes to pop the block, Healbot hits, and then maybe a Freeze hits. Mm -hmm. Like, how... How does thing that would be? Yeah, Tyson knows the, the, the understands the situation. Like the board clear after this, and it needs to. Like, if if he plays a board clear, he doesn't have much more that he can do on the same turn. Mm -hmm. But uh, now That's... it's getting really interesting because he has another freeze and uh, and doomsayer turn here, and Tys actually doesn't have a way to clear that. Oh, you low step swipe. How's that? How, how's that for you? Like, does that help? Because Alex, Alex might come down though if you do that, so. Yeah. I guess you're still yeah, losing this effect. overall. Yeah. Ooh, oh, that's a wow. pretty decent card. Oh! Wow. Yeah, swipe, just... swipe Shredder, and then. Man, you know what? Forsen could win this. It's not over. It's Who's just not over this? yet. It's possible. It's possible, oh, guys. That's Better so believe. What to do? That is just crazy. Okay, so you know what we need to see here? We need to see an eSports Zapomatic. Mm. Okay, followed okay. by... Hilarious. By a Savage War top deck. Mm. That's so exactly what emote, we need right now. Um, which emote do you think Forza is going to use after the Alex Strasse comes down? I'm going to bet like, thank you. Thank you. I, I say thank you, yeah. Okay. I think Forza is a thank you kind of guy. No I think so, too. Yeah, I think we can see some thank you. Thank yous. I don't know if he's gonna be in Thais though, but uh, 
I've seen him use emotes quite often in a situation like this. <laughs> Let's see if he goes for that, that emote. What if a Doomsayer comes out of that shredder? Can you oh, imagine man. the saltiness of forcing is Alex has to die? No way, we already saw one Doomsayer today. <laughs> Not possible. Okay. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> <laughs> what is this oh, you know this is just as good a do. I, I'm gonna take that. It should have been a mana wraith. You know, it should have been a mana wraith. It it should have been a mana wraith or another Nerbar weblord. But I'll take a patient assassin. All right. <laughs> oh my God. Orson. Orson. Actually, you could just heal bot, right? You heal bot and you you like you wait. I think that's better than playing Alex, right? Like it has to be done. Probably, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I can't even I can't even believe this. Orson's saltiness oh. is just incredible right now. Wow, this is this has been such a great series. It has. Oh, and the card draw. Oh yeah. And now now there's a chance that Dice is able to Pick up something he's really looking for. The thing is, if you play Lothab, the opponent plays Alex, you could still get BGH from Ancient of Lore afterwards, mm -hmm. and you might be able to push in some damage. Whereas if you play Ancient of Lore just now, you lose the board for sure. Pretty much all the time. Yeah. So I guess it depends on what you're valuing, like the OTK from Second Force of Nature. Um, what are you looking for here? Well, that's one piece, and that's oh, another yeah, one. Oh, yeah, some quality cards right there. I mean, with that, oh, that sets up the damage for next. And Druid of the Claw, Savage Sword, Hero Power, that's exactly 9 for Yeah, for that's next. exactly 9 damage. He needs exactly that. Yeah. Those are perfect. So, yeah, so if he trades here and, uh, like, Force and Flame Strikes, he's, he's gonna be able, to, uh, be able to kill him. Like, a Flame Strike is no good here. So you have to Alex Iceland the 5-5, kill a 3-2, right? You have to oh, Iceland that 5-5, five five, of course. Oh, oh he, he can Frostbolt face, actually. Like, like no, Iceland's face. He can ping or trade for that, and he can... But he needs to freeze face here, or he will be dead. Do you think he sees that? Like, how often would you do it, though, from his no, perspective? No, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, no. Yeah. Like, I, I would be lying if I said that I would play around the Druid of the Claw, so it's here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, after all that, Ty's still able to take it down. And Forsen really so with you know I'm I'm it's funny to say that Nerobar Weblord mm -hmm. was so annoying all this game like he had to kill it first before he could drop the Alex and even then he couldn't play Alex he had to play for Ice Block all game long um, wow Forsen not doing well at all today with that, the Mage that is just so bad for him oh uh, that patient assassin man it was the, it was the perfect turn for the Alex Ross and he just couldn't play the eight and into that like I don't know I I feel bad for for Horsen right now. There's I, like I four cards that couldn't work, right? Like Mana Wraith, Nero Bar, um, Patient Assassin, and Doomsayer. Like that's four still, two drops. That yeah. Issue. Like the game would not have been over. For example, Tice could have played the Ancient of the Floor and joined some like big game or, or so, and uh, Forsen didn't have all that much more in his, his hand remaining. So it would have been anybody's game after that, but definitely not being able to play the Alex Raza there, right? that was just like the nail in the coffin. Yeah, and now he's benched, so his uh, teammate Oskaka is going to have to be playing the Druid for sure, which is going to allow uh, Nihilum to decide whether or not they want to queue up RDU's deck or Life Coach's deck into this. Um, it's the Warlock, or from RDU, I believe there's a Shaman left. No, he won with the Shaman right now. That's right, he's got a Hunter left. Uh, both of which are probably okay, but I'd, I'd favor the Hunter here. I think we're going to see the Hunter, yeah. Um, uh, like, we, we dodged upon this just a, just a little while ago, but um, it's it's really tough to tell how good the, the handlock is against that druid. But it's also like we can't, if, if they queue up the handlock here, it's not, uh, I'm not clear on it if they think handlock is better against the druid, or if they just think that the handlock is better against druid than against mage. So, uh, ah, that's yeah, a good I, point, right? Because if you end up being stuck on that warlock with the freeze mage, that's mm -hmm. going to be an issue for you. That's yeah, because then this is like if if they want to snipe the druid with one of these decks, now is the time. This is the one opportunity they get uh, to to get the matching right. So, uh, well, after being Force boys were up like four and one, I believe. Now it's now it's tied at four and four, and not only that, but the, uh, the thing is, uh, if RDU wins with Hunter, the Warlock faces the Druid again, right? Because like Forsen can't yeah. be unbenched. So 
it's I think Hunter makes too much sense, right? Yeah, I would. No. Yeah, let's. Yeah, it's the Hunter. I mean, Hunter has really good matchup against Druid, and uh, can't, you can't really go wrong by playing it here. The freeze mage match with the with the Hunter is a bit like weird. I don't know. Like it can go both ways, but it's not that great for Hunter generally because uh, something like the traps. If you run three traps, for example, they are all just dead in your hand in most cases. Right, and uh, I think Eyes Barrier getting those really, really changes everything. Oh my god, RD with a very aggressive deck. If Oskaka doesn't pick up something good right here, um, this yep. risks escalating very quickly. Yep, let's see the inner right, some wild growths. How many? E sports! Okay. Oh, wow, okay, we're good. It's like, That's... okay, I like this hand because it's like, it has some bad cards in it, like the big game and the roar. <laughs> But it also has the good stuff, like the swipe and the uh, wild yeah. growth. It should be a fair game. Oh, Ooh. the perfect draw. I mean, he there has is, to go to that. You, you right? can't not play this. Come on, yeah. it's too good. Like, it, it, no it's way. like either wrath happens or wild growth happens, and only one of those things. The, the only terrible thing here would have been the inner weight keeper, but you can't really play around inner weight keeper. The guy of Suka would leave you in an even worse position if that was the, to happen. Yeah, rule number one: don't play around what you can't beat. It's pretty mm -hmm. much. Uh, I mean, do you do you expect wrath or wild growth? Hmm. I expect uh -huh. wrath most of the time, but wild growth. There are merits to it, just because you might get a better swipe. It's just that the opponent might leave you having to deal with this anyway. It's even pretty interesting. You, mm, go ahead. Because he could wild growth here and go for the swipe next turn. Yeah. You could also rather than just. Um, Hmm. Swipe next turn as well with the coin, right? Like it's his swipe could always be used if a Misha comes out um, with the yeah. coin, and then he plays Shredder on curve, and Wild Growth sits until very late. I think it depends on what you expecting to be facing. Like if you think that uh, if you ask Kaka and you think that RDU is playing Face Hunter, then uh, then I would rot every time because uh, because Face Hunter has limited amount of damage, and taking a juggler off right now would I uh, usually save you like. Well, at least at three, but probably even more, depending on how many minions are coming, so... Yeah. Mm, now he's gonna... The Lepernum's still there. And now the Wild Crop is not played. Yeah, it's one of those... I think this is one of the few games where you'll see Wild Growth just sit there because there's never been a good turn to play it. If the Wrath hadn't been picked up, we would have seen it just because it was the only option. Oh, but yeah. now that that's out of the way, then of course, things are a bit different. Then we'll see what comes out of that Shredder. It'll be a big deal. It I mean, might it turn out to be, be irrelevant. <laughs> oh, no. uh, I mean, he's gonna draw like an inner face, right? Oh. He has to draw innervate. Ooh, that's a great card, though. Especially if you get your counter shredder and oh, yeah. then wild growth into ancient is pretty much on curve. And you can even play BGH for tempo after the wild growth. Ancient of War is absolutely huge. Uh, if there's no silence for it. Ooh! Okay, no, this is looking very difficult. But Already let's see. 10 damage to. I'm, I'm sure he's gonna go face here. I mean, with the kill command is in, in his hand. Like, sometimes, if you've been playing mid range under, you have to evaluate the situation. Like, for example, if he had zero, um, zero, um, zero direct damage in his hand, it's not as uh, tempting to go face. But I mean, yeah. Wait, you could Savage Roar to use Nat Pagel as a buffer for that Huffer. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but uh, how good is the swipe? What to do? Oh man, it's looking the, so There's rough. like, there's nothing I like. There's absolutely nothing I like here. Yeah, I'm waiting. The only on way that. to kill everything is basically to smash yourself, your own face, into Ugh. a minion. It's going so low, and it, it, this is not even a clear. Oh my <laughs> god. The <laughs> vitality. What so the? dumb. What the on earth is going on? What am I looking at today? Those shredders have just been crazy, haven't they? Yes. I don't even understand. I'm I'm actually a bit confused about that. I, I expected him to take out that uh, shadow boxer. But then the vitality though would have had a good chance to survive two times. That's pretty funny, by the way. With the with the scenery. The little one trigger just because. Uh, like heal for heal for three. I know heal for four. Then like <laughs> heal one. And now ancient of lore, really uh, ancient of war. Sorry, is actually somewhat relevant. Like it's going to die, but at least it's going to soak up a lot of damage. And it might That's be. Why he to last time. Like, that, 
it, it actually it ended up like paying off really big. Because if he couldn't play that Angel of War this turn, he would have been dead to the high man. Yeah, the card draw wasn't going to be good anyway, yeah. so... A good, good call there, doing, using the Wild Crow. Alright. Uh, it's still a long way for the, for the Druid player to climb out of this. How, I don't how think there's anything unexpected in that Druid deck either. Like, I don't expect any funky tech that we just have never seen before. Yeah. So, it should all be fairly standard from here on out. And that high main, as a result of, you know, being very normal, is going to be a huge problem. Druid can't really no. compete. Okay, well, he found it. You see, he listened to you. Yeah. So, Nihilum coming back in strength. They're, you know, up 5-4, I think, now. And the only deck uh -huh. left for the entire team is Life Coach's uh, Demon Handlock. We mentioned how that could be their weak link, so again, they're not out of it yet. Uh, it's up against two matchups, which could potentially be somewhat bad. Druid is bearable, but I think uh, the Freeze Mage is a tougher one. I've been secretly just waiting for this this deck from Nihilum. It's the most interesting one for me, because I'm not sure exactly what is in there. Does it play like Imp Gang bosses, or well, uh, how, how fast is it, basically? Like, uh, how much late game, how much uh, some of the like mid range stuff that makes you survive the early turns? Because Life yeah. is known for playing creative stuff, but um, let's see. Well, I'm curious to see this one. He is a pretty good innovator, though, when it comes to when it comes to playing like handlock. I think he's one of the players that I've seen play the most versions of it. Mm -hmm. Like he's played so many variants of handlock, and it's one of the decks that he specialized the most with. So again, you say he's a very greedy player, and I tend to agree. Um, but he's also very good. It's one of the he's one of the few yeah. players that even Absolutely. if you know he's going to be playing handlock. You might just lose, even if you know his entire list. Like it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, like uh, I've been talking with him a little bit. That he's not so known that the, for the handlock play that uh, that they like. This was last week, and I was I was talking to him uh, in us at assembly where um, where players the, the format actually allow, allowed players to change their leg list um, uh, between the like group stages, and they knew that their opponents for next round and some like um I believe uh, who was it uh, try to uh, like anyway talk at uh, life coaches. Handlock, because it's an easy deck to counter if you put in some extra big game hunters and removal and cards like that. But life coach, what life coach responded to me was that, uh, yeah, 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 I don't care. It's like <laughs> it, still uh, all the matchups. Like even if it, decks can be built to be favored against it, but handlock is such a strong deck. Like the the core mechanics on it, like getting those cards or those big threats for a cheap mana cost, that uh, right. it doesn't fall. Uh, much under a 40%, even against the hard counters. I mean, that's a great point. It's one of the few decks that has never really had... Like, it, falls, it reminds me of the old Control Warrior, where they mm. would have bad matchups, but never absolutely horrible ones. Like, at their worst, I guess, a properly teched Warrior could... Like, after an Axe-Ramas with the Unstable Ghoul, Control Warrior still had a decent matchup against Zoo. Like, it wasn't even that bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to think of that. Uh, that's... That's uh, exciting, let's just say that. He needs something a little more oh, off -game. So that's okay, gonna wait. be a hero power. So here's the deal. Dr. Boom is cute, but it's BGHable. The other yeah, two you've got aren't. So real. what's your play here? And he does have the lore for an option and even, even the I mean the, here here's hero power for sure, but he has two mana right there. I'm actually I can't see. Uh, yeah, he's only got two, so he yeah, can't so, cast any of those. So it's got to yeah. be about the next turn. Like about if you play, turn. if you play Ancient of War, Silence makes you hate life, and there's you're not really stopping anything. If you play Doctor uh -huh. Boom, BGH makes you hate life. It's if you play Ancient so of War, you draw cards. But if there is no BGH, you actually like straight up win the game. Like it's so ridiculous. But um, I would probably go for oh. the lore. Because you get those two extra cards, and you need to have. A, he, doesn't, he didn't have a, a play for the following turn. So um, if he if he goes for the boom and he gets a big game hunter, okay. Well, what's the turn for? So by innervating the lore over the other two would uh, give would make him more likely to have a reasonable play for turn right. four. Right. That's what I was thinking too. But now I'm thinking as well. Uh, if you've got Doctor Boom and it comes out and uh, there's no answer. Yeah. You could win, and one of the things that yeah. we have to recognize about Demon Handlock is that unlike mid-range Demon Lock, which they're not to be confused, I mean, it doesn't run double BGH very often, um, mm -hmm. where, That's you know, mid-range Demon Lock always runs too, because it really gives him a lot of reach for removal purposes. Okay, so I got an answer for that. So if he had a, if he had a Shredder in his hand, I would go boom. 
Yeah. But here I would have actually went for the lore because of how bad the next turn is likely to be. Mm -hmm. He's going to go for this, and there is no BG, so I'm really excited to see how. Uh, how how life out. coach concedes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Void I mean, Caller has to be played, like, right? Like, you kind of yeah. have to try to get Malganus out ASAP. He's got nothing but good demons in hand, at least for him. Yeah, this is this is what I was talking about. That's a, that's a hero power pass right there. Yeah, but he'll start curving again afterwards, so it's still not too bad. The thing is that by innervating sure. Dr. Boom early, uh, you're getting a lot of you're getting a good handle on the board. You're also possibly Don't enabling him. Giants earlier than you want to deal with them. So, yeah, that's so much pressure. I mean, he can swing for nine here, and it's just mm -hmm. crazy. But uh, there's there is there is a molten giant in life butcher's hand already. Wow, that is a lot of pressure. What, that's what a lot is? of damage. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, yeah. If that void caller dies. Oh, I, I mean, if you defend of Argus, there's a good chance you could maybe get something you're looking for. It's not amazing, I'll be honest, but I think you do it because uh, it's uh, it, either the the Doctor Boom takes four damage, or the Druid spends his entire turn mm. dealing with it. Because if there was a Keeper of the Crow, which is like what you don't want to see, it would have happened last turn. Like the Druid would have absolutely played it over over the hero power. So yeah. I, I I really like the defender here. I don't think that can go too bad. Like the worst thing is that the the druid top decks the silence. I think it all really comes down to that like realization that the opponent would have played keeper on curve. I think yeah. that that's really a good point you make. And if life coach thought it through, then there's a great chance he played the point of Argus. It does, and this creates an interesting situation. Like that's that's actually surprisingly tough for Ostkaka to deal. So you have the option of using Druid of the Claw to kill it, and then you're able to deal with Malganus if it comes out, but then uh -huh. you're naked on board if that happens. Like, completely naked on board. This is a huge moment right here. Like, there's no... Yes. no I think that he wants the Malganus. Like, if you like what you want the Malganus right now. Even though sometimes the Jaraxxus is going to be such a huge stone that it's, like, impossible to get past it. But uh, the Malganus would have... Just uh, deal with that uh, Dr. Boom. Let's see and it's Jaraxxus. It's still not, it's, it's not bad at all. But uh, it's it's just the uh, life coach really needs a taunt. Yeah, without that, the taunt... Just deal with the Dr. Idea. Boom as well. Yeah. If you, do you taunt through the claw here? Because I think... Probably, yeah, you gotta protect, uh, yeah. protect the Dr. Boom. But it, it's gonna get like dark bombs anyway. Just thinking the Mala guys, maybe the Jaraxxus was even better. I'm just like the Malganus would have been a bigger threat, but it, as soon but as the there's... thing is, the, the thing is, like Malganus would have killed off your opponent's Doctor Boom for sure, and you would have then gotten the initiative to play a Belcher if you wanted, or and mm -hmm. then maybe later on play the heal bot. Oh wow, Skakos is going wow. full face. Very straightforward play, no messing around here. And how does that work out for him? Let's see. So he's got the Molten. He's probably going to play on this board. I think it's completely fine. I mean, if you like, yeah. Coach, yeah, you just leave the Druid of the Claw up. And I, I would say that you molt and you, you taunt first. You don't heal it. I would absolutely yeah. taunt first. It's a better minion, and you're not in any danger of dying. There's zero chance that you die. So why not play the 3 5 taunt? Yeah, Keeper of the Grove would have been played already. It goes back to that same minion we spoke yeah. of. The only way for you to really be in trouble is for him to have Keeper of the Grove, and you know there's not going to be any Innervate shenanigans happening. Yeah. So, Ooh, oh that's, my that's god. Scary, but does it change anything? At 6 mana still, like, the don't should be good enough. It might, yeah, I mean, that's kind of gain 7 health. Hold. That's gain 7 health, unless there's a silence. And not, not only does the Belcher gain you that 7 health, because it soaks 7 damage, but, um... It um, it also it trades better. Yep. If Oskaka picks up a keeper here, though, that could be almost the win. Force of Nature is not enough, but it's going to help clear up a little bit of things if he wants it. Uh, he can deal two damage to the enemy's face if he's looking for it. I don't know if two damage is worth playing a Force of Nature for, but I'd consider it. Yeah, all of the options seem pretty bad right now. Good like Strader, Hero Power, to take out the front half of that. But also the force of nature, having those double force of nature, there's no real use for the second one. So, uh... Yeah, you gotta you throw one away. Wait, wait, what? You gotta throw at least one away. No, you, you damage your, your guy and you're but, able to yeah. deal 
Uh, okay. Sure you deal two good. damage to the enemy. Yeah. Okay, so that's why I did. Yeah. He wanted a two or two in. Yeah, makes sense. Just like, okay, why do you damage the Druid of the Claw? But yeah. So this is the moment where Life Coach is stabilizing. He's got the board. Yep. And there's really going to be a lot of work for Askaka to do to really shake mm -hmm. him off of it. Now, one thing to note is there is a force of nature in Askaka's hand. If Life Coach doesn't pick up a taunt or another heal, he's basically mm -hmm. got, what, two turns to find the Savage Roar to get the win. Yeah, I think that play from Askaka, he really wanted to push in that two extra damage to, um, like, potentially have, um, have a little bit like a top deck swipe if, uh, mm -hmm. if there was no heal. Um... Do you draw? Do you taunt? Taunt is open to silence, because it becomes a 5-5. Five five. Ancient of Lore grants you the possibility of finding the lethal. Um, life coach right now, he has, what, he, what does he have? He has 16 power on the board. Okay. Right. Well, he's drawing, trying to find that Savage War for sure, nothing else. He might, he'd probably even end up cycling that Wrath. Just to find what he needs. And that's but, game right there. That's game right, right there. He has 16 on board, and he, now he has 6 in his hand. Exactly 22. And Life Coach it's is going to win this for his team. Yeah. We said that might be the weak link, but it turns out it's not as weak as uh, I initially thought. And Life oh. Coach takes it. Like, this That's is a crazy reversing, uh, reverse sweep here for Nihilum. Five games in a row from they get won by uh, the Nihilum. Amazing. I don't even know what to say. So that's a gr that was a great series. I mean, there's been a lot of really cool Shredder shenanigans happening today. Like, I had a really fun cool. time. Well, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I, yeah. I guess I have to agree. Like, I, I always feel bad for the, like, the player who uh, was on the unlucky side of that. Like, when things are going well and if you're Kaka and then, like, Doom Sir pops out. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I gotta say that it's pretty enjoyable still. Like, that's... Uh, that's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. So the, uh, the for the the last I guess the score of the day, um, what we're looking at is Force and Boys is at two three right now. They were two two equalizing, and Nihilum is taking the entire lead. I mean, they're staying in the lead yep. basically at four to one. They're the only team with that score at the moment. Um, no one is quite there, and no one can get there this week. It's impossible. Uh -huh. Even tomorrow, they're the only team who have only accumulated one loss, and if they end up you know, keeping that trend going, they might just stay the first train. I mean, you said they did a lot of preparation, and I think it shows. Yeah, I think it's paying off. They uh, they always take um, all the competitions really serious. They practice together. Um, I think a lot of their um, their um, their ways of practicing and uh, working the deck list, working the strategies, just uh, just working together. I think a lot of teams can uh, can learn from them. Yeah. They're they're definitely a really solid team. You just have to talk to them, and uh, you'll figure out how serious they are about it. It's really nice to see uh, a team working so well. I mean, in this league yeah. so far. But then again, everybody here has like a sick level of gameplay. So sometimes you get good days, you get bad days. I have to admit, um, sometimes I feel like it could be anyone's game, right? Like you, you see some of those matches, and you think, well, if things had been a little different, um, yeah, this or that it's player the small would have taken. One wilder, do you not draw wilder, do you not, and like those yeah, shredders. Yeah. Everybody or do you, know, do you find Patient Assassin off of Pilot and Shredder, or you know, uh -huh. small stuff like that. You know, kind of yeah. matters. I, I think the Forsen was also, they came really strong this week, and some of the Forsen's like freeze mage draws just not quite there. And uh, Yeah, so Forsen had a really big, rough day today. Really, yeah. really rough day. All right, guys. Well, that'll seal it for the day. Now, uh, before we leave, a quick shout out to the uh, to Amazon and Alpha Drafts for sponsoring this. The Amazon App Store is offering, as usual, you know, promotions and discounts. You can enter the promotion. Go to uh, you know, teamarcon.com/amazon for a fifty percent off of forty Hearthstone packs. If you get that, then it's going to get you a few cheap packs. Then again, I don't know if you can get that for the next expansion. I'd like it. But uh, I know there's going to be some more stuff from Amazon in the future regarding that, so keep an eye out. And also, if you want to check out the eSports Drafting League, alphadraft.com, you might get yourself uh, you know, a little share of that $300,000 they've got every week given away to people. And they'll match the deposit bonus of up to $250. Sorry. So thanks, Amaz, for organizing this thing. And thanks, uh, Colin, for being in charge of the production for the day. Thanks to Vs for casting with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, as always. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow, guys. Uh, we've got the second day of the week. It'll be you'll have like all the information at 10 a.m. PDT. So yeah, we'll see you then. Until then, have a nice one, and uh, see you tomorrow.